Okay, it's 6.01, August 14th. Um, we're going to start a work session meeting. Um, Michelle is present, our clerk. Uh, Josh Selectman, Jeff Selectman, and Mike Gould is out sick. Um, we have a couple guests with us. Uh, Parker Reardon is here. And Steve, what was your last name? Govoni. Steve Govoni. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about yourself, Steve? Uh, so my name is... Uh, stand up. Oh, it, it'll record all the way across. It'll reach you, it'll reach you no problem. Yeah. My name is uh, Steve Govoni. I'm an engineer with Wentworth Partners and Associates out of Scohegan, Maine. Um, uh, Michelle and I were just having this conversation. Uh, we specialize in historic restoration and bridges. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of the two areas that I focus uh, my, my firm on. We do do other uh, components within that, but um, uh, we came up here, uh, well, when were we up here? This goes back a couple of months ago. We were up here to do a walkthrough of the town hall. Um, we had other reports and, uh, and the MMA report that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. They wanted to, uh, we were asked to come look and confirm with what the MMA report had in it and see if there's any way to uh, uh, move forward from there. Uh, and at that time I was asked to, to um, submit a package that would help the town then write a, an engineering proposal. So right. I, I did those things. Uh, yep. And you then, did. of course, I bid on it as well, um, and uh, that's uh, basically why we're. That's why I'm here today, I guess, is just to bring yep. you up to date as to what we saw, and um, and uh, and I guess where to go. Yep. Forward. So your walkthrough was done with Jeff Libby, the previous town manager, correct? Uh, he wasn't with us, uh, so I had William Timken from my office and myself, and mm -hmm. we basically did the walkthrough. Yourself? Uh, yeah. Uh, Jeff was there for a little while with us and kind of went mm -hmm. through the spaces with us, uh, starting in the basement and up into it, and then we spent the next uh, two and a half hours in the building just... Mm -hmm. So you've been floor to ceiling top, up uh, on the yeah, roof? Attic, the whole thing, yes. Yep, yeah. you have. Okay. Yep. I've seen some of the preliminary stuff that you've sent us via email. Um, so my interpretation of it is we were roughly $40,000 to enter under contract to have the engineering study done on the building. Yeah, and that study is, and I, and I actually put this right in, right in the uh, um, kind of the opening statement here, the scope of services. What my plan of action is, or what and my normal plan of action is, to give you guys a master plan, mm -hmm. so that as not just for the stuff that you know we're we're trying to immediately cover, but how how we don't get into this position again. Right. Um, you know the the old buildings, uh, they all require. I mean, this one, you know, they all require work along the, along the way. But if that work is being done along the way, then it, it, it you can keep up with it. and You can be ahead of it. Right. Uh, what I find with older buildings in particular is that, um, uh, especially with, with these with the buildings of that era anyway, uh, what I find is uh, work that's done after the fact, the renovations and um, uh, especially when they change out how a roof works or how walls breathe and then again where drainage goes. That's what causes the biggest damage to these buildings, and I have, you know, my my suspicion here is when they when they regraded the parking lot out here, you know, they brought that so much higher than the building was ready to have, mm -hmm. um, and then that's you know that snow and ice got caught in there and just was able to you know freeze thaw freeze thaw, but it was pushing pushing on your basement walls. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I see the damage there, and that damage caused damage in other spots as well. But we. A lot of these buildings, um, and, and, and I, I'll give you an example just because I, I have one here, I have some pictures that uh, I took most of these shots this morning uh, just to give you an idea. This is, this is obviously a big old house um, in Skowhegan. Uh, I, I, when I say I, I do this historic restoration, I do it with passion. Um, because and I and I do it right, and, and when I say that, it's because I mean it. That's my own house. Oh, yeah. And I'm not second. You know, I'm not. I know 
the, the amount of work that I'm doing on this house is something that nobody else would probably spend. Uh, to get my basement to be waterproof right now, and it's, I'm going to spend about 120 grand. And uh, yeah, I didn't even show you the work inside the house to get to that point, but I had to jackhammer up everything. It's and everything. I mean, it's been a, a daily nightmare, but I know the building's going to it'll last another 200 years if we do it correctly now. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, you know, if you're looking at the house again, the problem was that that house at one time had a slate roof. Uh, it had copper gutters and copper downspouts. The downspouts went into the basement. They landed in a cistern, a cedar yep. cistern, that they used to wash clothes. So the basement functioned by getting all that water uh, into the basement and then letting it drain out from the basement. Everything worked nicely until they took the gutters off and the downspouts. And then they put on the metal roof. This is before I bought the house. And then all the water just started damaging the basement. So that's... Yep. It's, it's the way it was built was the way it was meant to function. We right. just need to get the buildings back to that. One of the things for me personally, I, I was chair of the committee. Um, we, our previous select board uh, basically moved us out of that building rather than approach the problems it had and do it as repairs as we went. They moved us into a rented space, so that changed the scope of what we got to do to move back in. Um, probably not good, but the other side of it, if we tackle it, it's got to be done right. It's got to be engineered. It's got to be, and that's where we're at, as you know. Um, one of the things that I'm glad to see with your proposal is the passion for the old building. That's that's something most people don't have. Um, that you know, that are in your shoes, doing what you do. You know, they'd rather engineer a new structure and burn this one down. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> you're never getting that back. <laughs> you you couldn't you couldn't build that these days. And um, our committee did a bunch of work on how to move in for the least amount of money because that's what we were up against as a town. Um, we're in a, we're in a building right now that isn't as close to the code the code that it's supposed to be at as the one we moved out of. But unfortunately, to move back into this building, it's got to be done. Um, we had looked at a number of different avenues on the foundation, what to do with it. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on uh, where to go with the foundation. Yeah, so s similar to what you see there, you know, we, we've got to, from one side at a time, one side and then half the front, uh, we've got to, we've got to get the water, the, the water's the issue, the water's moving the building, and, and um, for whatever the sub, the subsoils are in there, they, they have to have enough clays in them that are absorbing the water during, during, during the year. And then those those clays are just having enough time to expand when they freeze. Mm -hmm. That that issue is just pushing on the building and causing right. the foundations to buckle in. And, that, and that's um, we so again excavating all of that, getting that all that drainage pressure, getting that water pressure off off those walls, and then being able to push those walls back into place. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's going to be a slow process. It's uh, because you don't want to you know rattle the building and start cracking windows and all that. So right. it's going to be a slow process to do that. Um, the it'd be hydraulic jacks, you know, hydraulic jacks to start, and then from there it'd be screw jacks so you can just come in there and quarter turn them once a week you know, mm -hmm. for a couple months. Uh, but um, yeah, that's that's really going to be approach. Uh, slow mm -hmm. and steady wins the race, but they will have no more water pressure on them because what we'll do on the outside, this is it's a double chance, right? It's an opportunity to insulate the outside mm -hmm. while we um, while we get that stone base against there. And so long as we're so long as there's no water pressure, uh, again the water will freeze thaw. But as long as there's no water pressure against that building, it will it will not move any more than what it already has. One of the things we had looked at. Um, we had looked at replacing the foundation. We had looked at some of what you're talking about, and we had another company that came in and gave us an opinion um, back when we were a committee before this even 
was voted on by the town. We were a committee trying to save the building at that point. Um, this T.C. Hafford came in and they gave us a quote and their idea was similar. Um, they felt like all they did was the foundation piece of it, but felt like the drainage had to be addressed first. And then they wanted to do a steel structure inside and pour a wall against it so it can't move anymore. Um, and we had mixed mixed feelings in the committee and mixed feelings in the community of, of which way to go with this, whether we pour new concrete walls, do we straighten the ones that are there, do we use this TC Hafford system and they called it a stable lock wall, they pour a new wall inside and they pin it to the slab and pin it to the and to the uh, outer sill of the building. Um, the bottom line is, um, you're an engineer, that's what you do. So your opinion is very valuable here. Um, if we, if we were to, you know, to bring you on board and do this project. Um, you'd give us a complete outline of your plan on how to do it. I think all of, as you as you you know going through this process and the fact that you guys have such a <clears throat> background, I think one of the first things that I I do and I think one of the first things I would do is sit down with the committee and see where how you got to where you are, and then mm -hmm. again understand the master plan because obviously there's the use of the building back to a town office mm -hmm. but you've also got the theater on the second floor that's right and how do you bring that back to life as well so mm. um because uh, i imagine the town meeting I, I don't know how big town meetings get but i don't know where you're having those now either but uh, that's, that's we're easy. borrowing space from a church oh, okay so a town meeting would be back there and, and you any, any local talent shows or anything like that mm -hmm. but you have you have a beautiful theater up there, a beautiful, uh, you know, uh, uh, more main theater, so it'd be, it's a waste for that to be sitting up there and not, not accomplishing anything. So that, again, getting back to what's our end game and then mm -hmm. moving backwards mm -hmm. to see how we're going to get to that end game and, and, all, and all the components. But uh, the other thing I'm really happy to hear is that you guys have started looking at all these processes and which ones are the best. You know, each one ha is going to have uh, an effect on the outside of the building, what it looks like, and each right. one's going to have an effect on the inside of the building, the space in the basement, and whether that becomes usable space after or what. So right. uh, it's going to be interesting to see how you guys feel about what which what the real priority is over, one over the other, because that's going to really um, head me in the direction that I need to go. Right. Do you have any questions, Josh? You know way more about this project than I do. I wish my father was here. He's he's still in the hay field. <laughs> my father was part of the '92 renovation. He's been he's been a part of that building. He did all the trim work downstairs in it. Oh, nice. and my mother's done the stained glass and did a lot of history with the building. And that was part of the reason I became passionate about it and and got on the committee to to try to save the building. They were they were trying to get us to vote to turn it into an apartment house. And I didn't want to see that for the building. And yeah. Most, as it turns out, we put it in front of the people, and the vote was like one sixty something to thirty something, I believe, wow. in favor of keeping the building. Wow. So we feel like at this point, as long as it works financially, um, you know, that we have the backing of our town. Um, so there's a couple of concerns that I had. Um, First is historical integrity as we go through this. Yep. It, the building is a historical building. It's listed, as I understand, on, on the historical registry. Yes. Um, therefore, things like the brick around the foundation, some of the stained glass, and some of those things, um, I think it's going to be important to keep that in the back of our mind as we go. Um, you're maintaining that integrity so that we can keep it listed as a historical place. Uh, I will, so if, if I can interject there, you so can. all all of the procedures I uh, spell out, mm -hmm. is in, whether you know, it 
doesn't matter what component of the building we're fixing at the time. They all meet the National Park Service historic briefs, and those are the same briefs that are used for, um, that the uh, main historic commission uh, will use, um, the main historic society uh, um, uh, supports. So, uh, yeah, that that's, those things are critical. Even when we, you know, when I have clients that just want to mothball a building, uh, I give them, you know, I go, I, I reference the national briefs and mm -hmm. say, this is how we can do it. So if you want to restore the building later on, you didn't just walk away and now it's getting moldy on the inside because that's, that's, that's a condition that you want the building to breathe. So even if that was the case, you know, I, I'd be making the recommendations coming right from the, the National Park Service's briefs. Yeah. How long does a project like this take? you? Well, I, I'm imagining this one is probably going to be like a 10-year project just because of how much the, the town is going to put in in a certain year and then what we're going to, what the goals might be for a certain year. Uh, again, um, I would say historic restoration, it's tough because there's, um, there's so few that know how to do it correctly. Uh, uh, so, for example, you have the slate roof that kind of goes all the way around mm -hmm. the building right now. Uh, you know, there's only two or three uh, people on the main historic commission's list that are qualified to even do that kind of repair work. So, there's a short list there. Um, when that, when the when the roof was repaired, the top, the flatter portion of the roof, uh, that was done wrong. And I can, you know, you can spot that a mile away just by when you're driving up to the building. That they should have used uh, an anodized um, molding or uh, uh, copper molding that would have matched what was originally there, and instead they came in with the you know shiny silver. This is brand new looking uh, piece. So you know that that's the kind of stuff, that, and that you know that's in good shape right now. So that's not what we're going to touch, but we're just going to make sure that that doesn't happen again uh, as we work our way down the building or up the building, however we approach this. But uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't want this to be a fast process. I, I want this to be a very um, precise and well done project. That's that's how I would approach this. Eliminate backtracking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So if it wasn't a budget standpoint, say the money was all there. If, if the money's all there, then yeah, you try to move forward with as much as you can get done. And you're, I can guarantee you're going to run into a surprise here and there, right. and all of a sudden the money's not there. You know, the, if you're using the right guys for the work, then it's, or I should say, if you're using the right entities, right companies for the work, so, you know, that it gets expensive to do stuff <clears throat> with a historic building. And believe me, I can. I can tell you that straight up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I live in a 150 to 200 year old house. Yeah. <laughs> so getting back into the building as a town office isn't going to be instant. It's not going to be a year before we're back in the building. Well, it depends on money. Again, that, with money obviously, but it, really it's about the master plan. If that's if the master plan is to get you guys back into the building, and then we're working. Um, we're working around an occupied building. I mean, that obviously adds to time, but uh, you know, it, it sounds like the first floor is really the critical floor at this point to get back mm -hmm. into. So that's if that's where we need to be, then that's that's that'll be the approach. And I think that ultimately, I think you guys are renting the building you're in now. I, I, we are. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, why why they you got a, a building that's not on the tax base here that you should be occupying and now you're renting another building in the downtown so it's a double whammy so yeah i would say getting back uh bringing that back that rent money back into the fold of repairs on the building is much better than sending it out the door so uh, I, i'd be working toward that goal we just need to understand that there's an there's a extent of work that needs to get done how to get there yeah right. and the mma the mma will work with you so even though they give you that whole list of stuff that needs to get done if, if you're moving toward that it buys you time each 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 way. I've got another project right now going in Gardner. Uh, construction actually starts next week. It's the fire station, and the fire station is it was made with cinder blocks back in the fifties. So not not CMUs, but cinder blocks, and the cinder blocks are actually disintegrating from the road salts. So the first three courses of blocks are 
so the building's <laughs> crushing uh, over the weight of these cinder blocks that are disintegrating. So we're, the, the MMA gave them a year to fix it, and then it became a second year and a third year because they were they already had in place a plan to build a new fire station, and they're really resistant on spending the money to. If we're putting the money here, we can't put it here. And then, uh, but it, it um, once the fire station costs, for the, in the last four years, they, right? so now the MMA is forcing that issue. But again, they went from you got to you know you got one year to fix it to it became four years to fix it. So I mean that does happen as well. Uh, but if you're showing progress, I I think they'll just keep. All right. So you didn't get to the electrical panel this week. Maybe next year you get to it. They they mm -hmm. think about this. So you have a feeling that if we took some of the some of the big concerns off the list, that we could occupy the space in the office downstairs. Yeah. While this pro pro project happened. Yeah. So yeah. So long as we're we we're again, so if we're master planning the construction so that phases don't affect areas that your guys are in, and then mm -hmm. you know if we're going to have to move phases, then we switch in from one side of the building to the other as an occupancy or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it gets it gets um, a little costly that way mm -hmm. when you're doing that, but it, that's also buying your time. Um, uh, if you guys have all that money in the pot right now, and, and we, we're gonna try to drive, you know, to get at least the basement done and get the first floor occupied, then um, those 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 other items, the ones on the second floor, uh, you know, there's the the, the beams need. Um, need another post down now because they have uh, the terms uh, they they've crept so uh, wooden beams um, wooden beams and concrete beams creep over time so mm -hmm. it's there there it's a deflection but it's a it's a settling as well it's mm -hmm. well kind of like me and yeah. <laughs> uh, so as, as that you know that that beam will creep but you're never going to get it back to what it was right. uh, uh, so um, we're not going to try to get it back to where it was so much as just make sure it can't creep any further. That's really right. the goal there. But that, uh, what so would that you do with that? Would you put a post under it? Yeah, that, yeah, that, I was looking cool. at that. It probably needs, um, at least one post and possibly two. Yeah. And then where those posts line up, we want to make sure that we're not impacting office space down below in a right. negative way. So it's going to be just making sure we're, we're traveling that load all the way down to the basement in some right. way, shape or form. But, right. uh, yeah. One of the things that we've got to be concerned with as we go through this, for us to be able to use the second floor, we've got some accessibility things to deal with in this plan. Um, we, we've got to have some sort of a lift or an elevator or whatnot to get to the top. And all those things need to be figured in right from the beginning. Yeah. That, the, what are your thoughts? Do you think? Well, let me ask the big question. Would that elevator ever need to go to the basement? Let me just start with that question. I don't see that it would. Right. So, so long as it doesn't, then we can use the, because, you know, generally under these elevators, there's a, a pin. Right. Um, uh, because you've got, th you basically have three levels with the mezzanine in that area. So we have three right. levels to really think about as occupied levels that need that, right. uh, that accessibility. Um, there is a pit there currently where the elevator was supposed to be when they did the floor oh, in the cellar. Oh, really? So they, they were thinking that the basement was going to, it was going to go all the way down the basement then? Well, there was a pit for the, the, I don't think the elevator was planning on going to the basement, but we understood when, when I looked at that floor, there's a cutout right where the elevator is going to be. Huh. In the concrete is dirt floor. Interesting. I, I remember this. I remember it. I didn't know what it was for. So they, that's what it was for. About the elevator going because if we if it if it doesn't have to go to the elevator uh, down to the basement, then we can actually use the the height of the the basement as the pit. Mm -hmm. So right. you don't you don't need to go any further down than than what you already have because right. the, the, that um, there'd be no reason for people to be down there other than employees or service technicians. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, which is a very um, specific occupancy. Yeah. Right. But I think that if we if we start looking at the second floor, that definitely has to be in the plan, so to speak. Um, there's, and again, I wish my father could be here. He has so much more information on this than anybody in town, really. Well, I, I think the idea, once again, is you know, 
if if the if um, the board of the town decides to move forward, then that's that's <coughs> the first place I go is I'm going to be sitting in front of that committee, and I don't know if your father's still on the committee or yeah. wants to be back on the committee, but uh, you know, that's that's really I, I need to I need to be picking brains at the table because that's going to help me a lot. So we took the committee rate right to the point of um, getting a vote by the people to move forward with this building. Once it went to the town, the town voted for it. Um, we appropriated a chunk of money to start dealing with this building. Um, the committee's done no more work since then. We've stopped. Now we're to the point where, as you know, step one, phase one is engineering. So um, then I'm gonna I'm gonna say my my hopes are at that point that we reactivate that committee mm -hmm. because they are they are going to be the liaison or or better yet um, I'm really the liaison between the end goals mm -hmm. which we really seem to be like the, that would be the committee's responsibility uh, I'm the liaison between the end goals and the you know building codes and mm -hmm. historic codes and all that stuff so i'm really working i'm really working on their vision would mm -hmm. be my my real task mm -hmm. so before you actually send out contractors and ask for them for bids on what what is it going to cost to do this what's it going to cost yep. and put together a package you really need to meet with the committee at, at before at. that all gets Absolutely, okay. and, and probably more than once. Mm -hmm. I, 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 this, this is, uh, I am, all I am, all I'm going to be at this point is the resource for the committee. The, the, again, the committee's goals are our target, and all I am is the resource for them. Like, I am, I am at their service to, to get them there, and that, which includes then, in either the design, you know, analysis, design, um, and then putting it out to, to bids with the with the proper contractors, uh, uh, you know, walking those bids through, making sure we understand what those are. Those are all going to happen at the committee level, uh, and then by that time, the committee, uh, even if it's me presenting back to the select board at that point, then you know, or, or this committee going back to the select board, then we're coming back to the select board and asking for their approvals. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's really how that will. Work. How it works. Okay. Yep. And in the end, ultimately, it's your stamp of approval on this building yeah. is what they're looking for at the MMA level, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and really, what you'll be looking for too, because that it's it's a protection all the way around. It's 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 protecting the the integrity of what you guys are trying to do. It's it's service. It's providing the MMA with the. Um, Security, I guess, that they need uh, that you guys are moving forward with uh, right. with an engineer or with someone that, that is familiar with um, with the building codes. So. Your process, your piece of this project, as I interpret it, um, like you said liaison is a good word, um, but each piece of it would be bid out to specific contractors that handled that part. You don't do any of the work yourself. I do not do the work myself. No, right. it would be bid out to contractors who are competent in the areas that we're specifically right. looking for. At and that you time. have a contractor list that you've worked with I, before. I absolutely do. Yes. You do. Yes. Just, I, just as another uh, by note to that, if there's something that's really specific, you know, oh, we need some brass handrails that nobody else has around then we send out a request for qualifications. Like that, mm -hmm. instead of the request for bids, we send out a request for qualifications. And then at that point, we get those back, we sit down with the committee and we say, all right, here's, here's all the projects they're referencing. Let's call their references, see what they got. Let's go out there, feel them, touch them. Um, I've done that before too. So we have eyes on work that's been done so we can sit there and really choose a contractor for a specific component. What are your thoughts? Um as a group, we looked at some of the grants that were available, which we didn't qualify for most of them. What are your thoughts 
um, if we were to come across grant money and applying it. Oh God, yeah. You'd, you'd be into that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's tough because unless the municipalities have a tough time getting um, getting uh, historic uh, grants for restorations like this because they are on the ta on the, they're already a non taxed entity and this is. Um, but is there an underlying five hundred one C three anywhere in town that uh, that you know this could be their this could be built into their um, mission statement? The only thing that we really have is we have a historic society. They have their own building on the other side of the stream over here, and that building also is failing. Yep. Um, if the two were to ever merge and they were to occupy space in here, that could change the, the ability to, the, the grants that you can apply for. Yeah. Um, but currently, they are on the other side of the river in another building. So, uh, it, it would be interesting to find out if they are a registered 501c3, because if they are, um, then that that merger could be worth, you know, large amounts of money for both. It's, it's a win-win. Maybe we're right. trying to restore both buildings at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I personally would like to see the historical society right in that building. I think it makes them more relevant. Yep. When you go in and you've got to stand there and wait to register your car and there's a whole room full of artifacts, it's going to make them more relevant, yep. in my opinion. Yep. Yep. But um, that's just my opinion. You know, We haven't broached the subject with anybody, so that's just my would, opinion. Would the library move back in there? Because it looks like no, that one. We've closed our library. Right. Yeah, so permanently. Yeah, we sold the books. That's yep. gone. Yep. yep. So that that's some of what we've looked at, and some of what the committee looked at is is future use of the building, um, not just to justify its existence, but just a shame to have that much restored space and not have a purpose for yeah, it. Yes. Even your attic's bigger, you know, bigger than most houses. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm not. I'm making no promises about getting in the attic. I'm just saying, no. Uh, even your attic's bigger than most houses. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, in, in this, do you have a, is there a rough quote for the cost of services? Yeah, it's, it's, it really works as a menu. Um, so, you are, there are the, there's the items that uh, I perform, uh, the architectural design services, structural design services, permitting, bidding out the stuff and then the construction management. So those are the five line items. And then within that come the, uh, you know, the cost associated really with each line item or item. Okay, I see how you've broken it down on the bottom of the pages for each section. Yes, yep. And again, this, what you've got here is the engineering part of it. Your part of it. Yes, yep. Okay. Now, when you, when you engineer this project, if you were to take this on, so this is, as an example, this $1,600 right here is, is our fee from you to us to perform this. Now, when that goes out to bid, um, when you bid that, there's no additional cost for the bidding process. Like, we're going to ask you for a quote for the engineering, and it's going to cost us to do that. Is there a cost with each of the other contractors uh, to place a bid on this? No, they're, they'd be bidding on the work that they're going to do. Right. They don't uh, charge for that. They don't charge to bid on it. No. Okay. No, they're, they're trying to get the. So there's, there's no other fees in there. No, yeah. okay. not not from my end. So even when I when I you know technically I bid on this as well. Mm -hmm. um, you guys put out an RFP uh, that stated what you were looking for, and mm -hmm. then I responded to that RFP right. because I walked the building. Up. You know, I couldn't even say I had an advantage because I'd already been in here. Mm. Um, but I also knew what I was up against. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how they respond. I didn't, you didn't, you didn't get charged for me to right. come in 
drew the bid, you know, drew a bid on it. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I had already been in the building, right. so uh, because there was a report that needed to go back to the MMA at that point, but. Uh, so I had again, I had the advantage of not needing to come look at it. Right. But that's that's pretty normal in our bidding process. As you come, then that's what happened. When if I go to bid this project out, I'm going to have a um, a mandatory pre-bid conference right here on site for whichever item we're bidding at that time with the contractors and say, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to walk them through step by step right. uh, the engineering that we did, what we expect from them, and then you know any other. Um, contractual um, uh, attachments that are or contractual agreement parts that are going to be built into this. You know, they have mm -hmm. so many days to get it done. It has to be done before a certain date or whatever the restrictions might be. That'll all be part of their big package, and then that's what they're bidding on. They're not right. bidding on just showing up. Yep. Then you come to us and say, "This is what it's going to cost to get the building done to this point." Yeah, so I would, I would uh, again, I'm, I'm going to strongly recommend that I'm working with the committee. Um, and then, then I, I would sit down with the committee, I would explain the process, um, what, you know, because they, they would have been part of it from day one anyway. They would have known what was going out to bid. And then just to go out to bid comes back to the select board, no matter what. You guys have to approve every single step along the way so that, so that it is legit. Um, the bid openings, because this is this is a public building, uh, and I, I don't know uh, exactly what the ordinances read in terms of like what the max min on the bids, but uh, again, all that stuff happens here in front of this board. Um, so what the, what the committee does for us though, is the committee should be making recommendations to this board, and hopefully this board supports the committee enough to say, yeah, their recommendations are, are the direction we want to go. That, like, that's, that's really what you, um, in my mind, because you're, you're all volunteers, right? right? You're both on the committee side and the select board side. So, um, you know, you guys are getting the, the, the re you're getting reinforced with those decision makings by your own peers, basically, your own people who live in this town as well. And then, mm -hmm. um, and I, again, I'm, I'm representing the town of Sangerville. That's 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 all my function is to represent the town of Sangerville. It was both on who we're putting on this project and the work, the, you know, guaranteeing the performance of the project, and then um, uh, guaranteeing the safety uh, of the project. So those, those are the things that I would say that, that, that are my mm -hmm. task. Mm -hmm. I think one of the concerns that I see, um, the timeline thing on occupancy, that's going to be, that's going to be the question we're going to have to have the answer to when we talk to the people of the town of Sangerville, when we put the committee back together. Um, the committee all still has everything. We just, we haven't done anything because we just came to this point where We've voted to do the project, and we've earmarked some money for the project, and I think there's going to be a few big questions. That's going to be the biggest one. Um, timeline to reoccupy a space in it to get out of our rented space. I think that's going to be the first question that we've got to, got to have the answer to. And I know that's difficult from, from your position, because... <laughs> Yeah, there needs to be time at this stage. There needs to be time for the engineering, <coughs> time to take it out to bid, right? And then, and you know, some of it's going to be done before we move in, right? <laughs> We're already looking at the end of October at that point, and it's really hard to start all that civil work right. around the edge of the building at that time, especially right. if there's going to be a concrete poured or anything like that too. So that's you know, right. that's another. Concern is uh, the overnights are going to require heated concrete. That's an additional cost that we don't want to hit. Um, right. So yeah, so so the question is how how much longer? Yeah, <laughs> it's the middle of August now. We're up against we're up against the timeline here, and right. all of the good contractors are booked for they're finishing their year. Yeah, so it's going to be hard to. We're going to struggle to find qualified contractors because mm -hmm. this this really is 
precision work, even for an operator. This has to be an operator used to working near stone foundations, and if you know this isn't working in the woods, this right. like this, this is you know this is these are stone foundations only on a three-story building. Right. If you're not familiar with working around those, and you don't understand that the walls are probably battered, and you don't if those if those things aren't already in your head as the operator, you know you, you're this mm -hmm. might not be your project. Right. I think we, as a committee, we saw basically the same things you're saying, you know, the damage that the pooling water, the freezing water, whatever it was, by the entrance. And by and the other thing that happened was they had that bulkhead, and we had a group of people that thought we was wasting heat out through the bulkhead, so they insulated the wall at, at the bulkhead. You, you saw what happened, oh, yeah. and it pushed. Yeah. The, the two points, right? Because the drainage, the yeah. original drainage comes down this way, and then all of a sudden the bulkhead goes in, and that water had no place to go. That's so right. even though they, it appears like they put a drainage tile or a drainage, uh, you know, perforated pipe up and around it, it's up too high. So right. all that water is still getting trapped on the low side, yeah. And then the freeze thaw just did its thing. And this is what I was saying earlier. Most most damage to the building. So I'm showing you my house. They added a bulkhead at one time after they did all that work. And all my, uh, I have valleys on a four valley house. All, all the water sheds from that valley to the uphill side of the bulkhead. Right. It had no place to go but into my stone basement. That's the only place it could go. So it was blown apart the wall, as you can see. Yeah. <laughs> and, Same uh, thing right next door. Yeah, so yeah, this is, uh, this is, yes. Um, I'm living this, I'm living this mm -hmm. dream. <laughs> so your proposal would be to to put anchors in the wall and, and jack the wall out so it was straight and then correct the drainage and insulation. All the way around. I would take the I'd take all the back pressure off so I'd, the excavation would be first. First, yeah. Get all the pressure off the wall so that we have something to now it's not we're not pushing against soil there, that's yeah. already yeah, because as the wall starts to buckle, the soil's filling it in. As the wall starts to buckle more, it's filling it in. Mm. So we gotta get all that soil out of there so we can push it all back. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the first thing is get the pressure off the wall so it doesn't want to continue moving in and then and then start the process of the fix. Yep. I had another question. I lost it. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of these guys were on on the original committee. Oh, good. Parker was. Bryce, you were on the original committee too. A little bit. I did a little. I give the options for maybe, you know, mods the type thing. Yeah. But they, they go that way, obviously. So no. Nope. It's fine. Which is, but you, I just had one quick question, though, if you don't mind. Just real sure. Fast. You said you had a list of contractors. What, let's say that you we accepted one of the contractors. What is the time between their taking the job and they're actually doing the job? Like, does it, did, obviously, like you said, this end of this year is pretty late. Right. But, what is the time frame? Someone might give up for year two. I mean, what's the, is it 36 months, 24, 12, six? When, uh, so when we take it out to bid, we're gonna yeah. all, in the bid documents, we're saying that this is the time frame that we, we want the work to get done. Right. So there there will be uh, your your startup date, um, you know, your 50% completion date, your substantial, substantial completion date. Mm -hmm. Those are all built into the bid. So the contractors that would be good enough Obviously, I understand that. Does that limit the amount of contract, different contracts? Sometimes it does, yeah. I, I can give you examples. Uh, again, I was talking to Michelle about this earlier, so I do a lot of bridge work. Right. And um, just because of all the rain that we had last year, the bridges that we were supposed to put in the water last year didn't get put in, so this year we've got a double load going. Right. And uh, so I'm bidding out to, you know, normally anywhere from 12 to 15 contractors. Uh, it's where my package goes out that many contractors to bids in certain areas, mm -hmm. I'm getting five showing up on the bid box and two bids showing up. How many different contractors do you think that you are available to get to this job? Like, are we talking 10 and maybe two can do it? Are we talking 15 and seven can do it? I mean, what? I, it's going to depend. I, I'm, really, two. I'm really struggling with it's going to get done this year. So right. maybe right. next year there there be more. Uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if we're getting this out um, if we're bidding this out in February, uh, that's when the contract is the hungriest in February. That's what I'm saying. If you get down now, we might have a better option price right. later. Yes. 
That's what I'm saying, yeah. Really? Because now you're going to get top dollar because you only have a couple people to do it, a couple different choices. The more choices, the cheaper, I would say. And like you said, the heated concrete and all, yeah, the, I'm assuming all the, the other things that are going to yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Well, we, you we, don't want to rush the job either. No, you know, you, no right. So to, we, to we realistically be, yeah. be in the building, I know what the goal is, ooh, we got to get in there. Right. But we don't want to screw up. Right. We don't want to work thing. around ourselves so, and cost money. You know, right. if we don't get back in the building for two years, mm -hmm. you know, or three years, I mean, it would be better than to rush something and then have to back it. Or, or spend an extra 200 grand to work around ourselves. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's the other thing. We don't want to be in their way either. I mean, we're paying rent, but that's, by comparison, probably cheaper than, than the alternative. Mm -hmm. Well, you just brought up a good point. Sometimes that rent's going to be cheaper than us having to remobilize just to work from right. between offices or cover everything. Yeah, I think what, dust 15 covering. grand a year or something we pay for It's rent. just about, yeah. You know, for $15,000 to have a building full of people to work around, yeah. you'd it's, cost more than that. And well, and then on top of that, you got to think about in the office itself, they're going to make noise. Mm. How are we going to handle the older people that can't hear us now with right. noise above us or phone calls or walking a plank walking a plank across the big ditch around the building <laughs> yeah, to register your snowmobile. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tripped over the, the tough part is you know smoke detectors are gonna have to get covered during the day and then they're gonna covers the covers have to come off every night and you know so those are just that's just time added to a job because now you right. have someone who's specifically doing that. Alarms might go off just from the dust. So you know, now everybody's excavating the building, and, and yeah. so. So since your bid package, or since we bid the package out, the building has sat that much longer. And what about the mold that could possibly be in there now that wasn't there when you walked through it? Does that add a different twist to your? Um, Your package? It's 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 a consideration. Like I said, you know, one of the, uh, one of the items that uh, the um, National Park Service historic priest told us it's not a mothball building. That that building wasn't mothballed correctly. So your concern is is very legit. And then you just mentioned that area down in the basement where the where the um, insulation and the, so that is the place where moisture's coming in, so all around that area is now adding to the moisture that could be in the building. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yes, what you're saying is very legit. And it's, it's uh, again, these are the things that we're gonna have to, it, it, we're gonna have to acknowledge what the master plan is and then how we're gonna get there. And But that is gonna be one of the things, while we're getting there, these things need to happen. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you, uh, and, you know, here's my, my hint. The first thing I wanna see is the guy fixing the slate. Because right now, water is getting into the building from the roof in two spots. Those two spots need to be fixed right off the bat. This is not a massive, big, big money item, but it's one that I would say is critical. You know, the, you you have shells to a building, and in this case here, the weather, the, the shell that protects you against the weather, the weather barrier, is has been violated. So that we need to get that that one fixed at the roof level. That's. Whether you, whether you bring me on or not, please get the slate fixed on the roof. Yeah. Uh, because that one there is going to destroy the inside of the building quicker than any of the others. Right. So ice skating on the second floor is not a good thing? I didn't say that's not a good thing. How the ice got to the second floor is what's the problem. Yeah. 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 Now, the, the, other, the other concern that some people have brought up through this process is abatement. Um, you know, we've talked about some mold. You got that, you got lead paint, you got asbestos that we need to, that's part of your bid package is to identify if we do or don't have a problem. Right, yeah. yeah. Now, do you do that or do you have a contractor that comes in and does abatement? Well, again, the, the, uh, I don't do contracting. So right. all I'm doing is calling out how they did and then, you know, mm -hmm. and the abatement contractor would come in and, and do the work. Uh, I am a licensed um, asbestos remover. I am a, a, a licensed, but again, I'm one step further because I went the extra day. I'm a licensed ex, uh, asbestos supervisor. 
Uh, I'm also a licensed lead supervisor because, again, went to the extra day. So those are OSHA courses. Mm -hmm. uh, they're 40-hour 40, uh, 40, um, courses. Mm -hmm. uh, 30, 32 hours gets you your license, and that extra day gets you your supervisor's license. Um, so I do have those two licenses, which means I can control, uh, uh, well, it means I can talk the language, certainly, of either one of those two. Now, you know, for, for this, for the lead in here, because it's not living space, most of that can just be coated, you know, mm -hmm. painted over. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, when, it's, it, when it's introduced into a housing space, especially if young children are in the house, that's where it has to be completely abated. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, again, function of the building matters. Mm -hmm. um, there were concerns about the horsehair plaster, and um, our code enforcement officer started in this whole abatement thing, and yeah. what he had learned was, again, if it's in good condition and coded, in our, cir in our circumstances, it doesn't have to be abated. Correct. Yeah. And that was his interpretation. He yes. was part of the committee. He's absolutely right. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the, we're, we're, even when the, the, the building code is now being trumped by the historic preservation codes. Uh, so in some cases, like we know that if you're going to build a brand new building now or occupy a building, the, you know, the stairs have to be 11, 11 inch reveal tread, seven inch height is the maximum, uh, you know, five and three quarters is the minimum, and yada, 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 you go through the whole process with it. But well, historic, obviously the stairs are, you know, nine this way, nine that way, um, we're allowed to keep stuff like that. You know, handrails are down to 31 inches instead of the 40, uh, 42 that's required for a guide rail and 36. Uh, so all those things are get to remain in place because it is historic. And that's uh, that also includes, as you just said, the horsehair blaster and all those components. So long as they're sealed, someone can't get to dig their fingers into it and just, right. you know start pulling that stuff out. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you go through the process every... Every bit of caulking back then was asbestos in it. The horse here had an asbestos in it. Then they painted the lead over that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <And it> gets, <laughs> right. That was some of the concerns as a committee that we were looking at is, you know, we didn't want to get into a $200,000 abatement pro project, you know? Yeah, what do we want that? But yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, well, whatever. Yeah. 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 Just, we, we had to start removing plastic. We didn't want any surprises <laughs> that were that size. <laughs> Now, historically, they want you to keep the building intact as much as possible. And if you're utilizing the building, okay. especially if you're utilizing it the way it was originally intended, so this was always a town hall, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's the original intent. That's this to me, this to both national historic and state historic is the absolute dream. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get the building back to what it was, then um, both in purpose and in form. Mm -hmm. You guys look like heroes. Where we were at, the town, the town voted to spend up to four hundred and forty thousand um, dollars to get the first floor usable. Is how that was presented. That's where we. That's where we stopped with it. If we're talking the whole scope of the project, we all know it's more than four hundred and forty thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, so we've got we've still got some things like that to get through. Um, if this is a, a project that could be done in phases, getting the first floor finished and occupied, and getting the foundation corrected and the roof corrected, and we fit in that budget line, then you know we can move forward with it. If we can't, then we we need to bring it to the people and figure out what direction they want to go. And, you know, as a committee, we looked at it as doing the maintenance so we could stay there and not, not really doing any improvements to the building, just, just making it a usable structure. Um, that and a total renovation are two different things. And we just, we need guidance as a town which way to go, what to do. We're looking, you know, we're looking for grant money, obviously. And there's some out there. We're just going to figure out how to qualify for it. Yeah, and like I said, that, that um, to have an occupied 
501c3 in the building, already yet have to have a 501c3 whose purpose is the building um, is yeah. going to be that that goes a major way. So Scowhegan's going through something similar. Our municipal building is opera, also our opera house. We now have a 501c3 uh, mm -hmm. lines up productions that uh, is going to start managing the opera house, which now for the first time in our history makes us eligible for grant money that's not available to a municipality. It's, right. it's just not out there for us. So um, these foundations that like donating to performing arts, that that's an opportunity. These foundations that like donating to historic restorations, you know, that's mm -hmm. not out there for a municipality. So right. I think if we can, uh, again, I'll go back to if, if that historic society is, is registered that way, then it's really time to tap into that resource and have them at the table mm -hmm. uh, with the committee and say, yeah, we, as a team, we can accomplish a lot more for both buildings, if we want to go that way, or, or better yet, as you said, let's get you back where you belong, let's get you back over here where you can, where you are, um, where you are a, a fixture that, right. right off the bat, you're walking in and you're seeing you. Uh, I think that that would go a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an attorney on our on our committee, and um, he practiced in another state. But his his words of advice was same thing. Mm, yeah. um, you know, he pushed pretty hard towards that, and we had mixed feelings in a cross section of the committee and a cross section of the residents. Some were for it, some were against it. So those are those are those are things we got to look at. How to go out doing it? Yeah, I, I think if you focus on the end game, mm -hmm. yeah, there's going to be concessions one way or the other. Some are going to want this to be a little different. Some are going to, but if, it, if the end game is the building is going to be up for another hundred and two hundred years, then right. um, I think those concessions are, are you know, it, it, it's not going to be. It's not going to be a smoothie. No. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there, there's going to be a couple of strawberry chunks in there. But you, <laughs> right. you got to choke those down, too. And uh, uh, but if, you, if, if we can get, if we're really looking at the end game, that's um, that's really the quickest way to get there. Is mm -hmm. let, let, let that committee grow to incorporate in some way, shape, or form so that um, we've got the power of that of that nonprofit in there built right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was the, the questions I had. Um, so the process of this, if we if we make the decision we want to select you and move forward, what does that process look like? You're going to give us a bill for this amount of money, and you're going to start the engineering. No, no, I, or, I you know, you'll basically sign the contract. Um, and uh, this one had a yeah. This one has a, a retainer. Mm -hmm. So uh, for items, so you, you do the retainer. That's on the uh, and that's, that gets us started. And we bill you. We bill you in the, as we complete stuff. Yep. Okay. And that and the things we'll be billed for are itemized. And the hourly rate for that is well, that's, yeah, yeah. The hourly rates are there, but it's really the itemization is really happening on page. Um, the itemization is really happening on page is uh, four, the bottom of four and the top of five. That's really those are the those are the bullet items that we got. Uh, what I'm going to do, and then what those items cost uh, for me to do them. And then we pay those as we go, as they're completed. Yeah. Yep. So. In the contract, um, so we pay a sixteen hundred dollar retainer for par day, and then item two on par day will be another twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, that's the one that's done. So if we're looking at part A, yep. it's a mapping of some sort. <clears throat> but yeah, so that's the yeah, topography because we have some civil work to do there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah, so part A is the civil work. Yep. Uh, and that's and that's probably. Um, 
that that's I, I want to get that I want to get the the physical work done right off the bat, but the civil engineering is really down the line a little bit. It's mm -hmm. it's really moving right into um, getting getting to sit down with you guys mm -hmm. and uh, on the architectural and definitely the structural side because the, the foundation walls obviously is the structural side and any of the items that were uh, called out um, in the MMA report we, you know, we'll kind of tackle as we move along. But. Yeah. <clears throat> so on page five, um, it says, therefore the estimated cost of our A&E services is $44,000. Yes. And then it, it breaks down what that includes. Yeah, that's all the stuff about it. Yep. Right. That's everything that I've read to that point. Yep. Okay. Yeah, then I've added I'm, follow I'm following now. Yep. And then item, item six on that list is the construction management. That That is a completely separate... You know, if you want me to take that role, I can take that role as well. Mm -hmm. uh, which puts, which would just put me out here a lot more than mm -hmm. just, you know, when, right. when it, uh, an A and E comes in, you know, we we are monitoring the work uh, to make sure it meets standards, but we're really only looking generally at you know ten percent of the work you know, mm -hmm. at a certain we're there maybe once a week to, on, on days and then you know for an hour or two if we're seeing them we're going to be in their face a lot more so. right so construction management costs any rough idea i mean i i have no idea what yeah, so what that would be additional. Trial, that's that, that was seventeen thousand. okay right there that's right below it is gotcha right i see and again it's um, I, I don't think we're anywhere near that place, and that's why I do this as a menu. Uh, so it's just like going to the store. You, you get to pick and choose which ones you want, and um, you know, and that's that's those are the ones I'll complete. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, this you know, the foundation walls is all structural, so that's right. that's going to be you know, uh, that is what it is. But um, yeah. You know, that's the best way to try it. It's just a menu. Mm -hmm. The big question is going to be from the people. They're not going to look at any of this. They're going to have two questions. What are we getting? How much? And at this point, it's such that that's a question that doesn't have an answer. We, we search for an answer for a long period of time. Yeah. What's this project going to cost? Yeah. Um, and you probably don't have an answer either, you know? Been it a long time, but well, I think, um, and I don't. I'm sorry, I don't remember this gentleman's name. But as we, you know, it's I can't. If we're bidding it out right now when nobody's hungry, you know, they, 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 they're and then if we're saying there's a deadline of November 30th, you know, yeah, no. that that price is going to be double what it's going to be if we bid it right. out in February and say the deadline's November 30th. Yeah. Um, so once we get through this. And you present the bids, we'll have an accurate number of what it's going to cost. Yeah, for any given component, because again, the ones doing the foundations are not the guys you're going to want on the roof. Right. right? Those, are, right. those are two different components. Right. right. Uh, and we really want to almost treat each section like that because you guys, uh, you guys might have a, a carpenter who's fantastic here in town and that maybe, uh, and who's unknown other than within inner circles, and that's the guy you guys want doing the trim. And, and I would say this, if it's a taxpayer in this town um, and he's working on this building, I'm, I'm, I would rather see that than have to bring in someone from the outside. Mm -hmm. But again, it needs to be a carpenter who's familiar with historic restoration. Mm -hmm. and, and that sometimes means that you're not just being able to use your miter saw at kind of 45. Right. You're actually coping and, and, and you know making those joints fit because they're not 45 anymore or none ever were. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's really... Uh, you know how we got to approach it. It's it, and again between the select board um, and the, you know the historic society and um, this building's restoration committee. You guys have to have names of like like those are the ones we want. And if mm -hmm. if they're 
Uh, same thing, if there's an operator, if there's an excavation company that's you think is qualified to, to do the work, then you know, here we go. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'd rather use taxpayers doing this than go outside, uh, right. but sometimes that's not possible. I, I, right. I don't think there's um, a sleep guy in this town. Um, mm -hmm. I know there's one up in Munson, the other one's down on the coast. Uh, right. So that's, you know, that's where we're yeah. going to end up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I don't have any further questions. What about you guys? I think you've covered everything. Learn. 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 Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, because of the type of meeting that we're having tonight, they can't make any decisions at yeah. this meeting. Yeah. That, that will happen right. next meeting. Yeah. And you, you, you stated that even when we got last week, so I know right. we talked on the phone last week, so I'm, I'm we, right. we wanted this to be, number one, we're, we're recording everything we do um, so that the public can have an opinion. Yeah. And what I hear, they hear. They can develop their opinion from the same information I'm using. And that's what we're trying to use for format with everything we do. So these workshops are recorded. The people are going to have the next week to listen to them. And believe it or not, it seems to really work. I get so much input from people just listening to this. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yep. Yep. And it's, it's good information. Um, so yeah, like, like Michelle said, this as a workshop, we can't make a decision, and, and one of our selectmen is sick, so we wouldn't make a decision without him anyways, but... Um, you have my interest, and, and I, think, I think for us, we may want to just invite the whole committee to come back together and talk about it before we make this decision, just to get that input. I think that's... I personally think that's a great idea. I, I think I think number one, if we move forward with this, and again, it doesn't matter if it's me or not. It, I think that community being back together, <clears throat> because you're gonna that the only way this is gonna work is gonna is gonna have whoever sitting in this seat, who's ever sitting here, me um, or someone else, is gonna need the input from mm -hmm. the people who are gonna. Who are, have the vision for what the building is going to be and what it, what their end game is. So. Now you're still willing to put your stamp of approval on somebody around here that you feel is qualified. I'm putting my stamp of approval on on the, the drawings and the work that they should be. So they're gonna get a set of drawings for me, and that's how they're gonna build it. That's what I'm putting my stamp on. Okay. So yeah, it's it's not that you're bringing someone in. He gets to be. Oh, I decided to use a, uh, you know, he called out a, a five inch round post, but I can buy this pressure treated four by four post instead. So I chose to do that. No, that that wasn't one of the options that I gave you. I gave you something that was historically relevant or whatever it might yep. be. And that's what we're, that's the plan of action. So, so okay. I, that's what I'm stamping. I'm, I'm giving them the instructions. They are following the instructions. I just want to make sure at the end that we can get insurance and it's yes. not, you know. Yeah. No, that's exactly, that, and that comes, that comes from both the design plan, design specifications, I say both, so that, you know, design plan and design specifications, and then Okay, that carries through as to the, the workmanship then followed those design plans and specifications. And that's, mm -hmm. so that's, um, if you're looking at these items, that's what my construction control costs out, the construction administration side of it, which is mm -hmm. item five on this thing. That's, that's me being there, understanding what their approach methods are and that they're following the specifications. I'm checking in to make sure that's happening throughout the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. All my questions are answered. I, do you have any questions for us? I think Michelle's done a nice job of keeping me up to up to speed as to uh, mm -hmm. what this was going to be about, and uh, so no, I'm, I'm I'm good. You guys beat me down. <laughs> <laughs> They really have hit the ground running. I've thrown a lot at them, um, and they've done great so far. So. Good, good. Yep, we have a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs>
Sounds like it, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes. All right, well that's that's what we'll do. Um, we'll, we're gonna take what you've given us for information, kind of digest it, and then make a decision. Excellent. Um, Thank you for making the trip up to come meet with us, Tom. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. You said you live in Skelgan, so I thought you said. Yep, yeah, it's a fair trip. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm gonna be in uh, gonna be in Presque Isle on Friday, so we got yeah. two, two bridges to go look at. Oh, that's a trip. <laughs> yeah, that's nine in the morning. I'm supposed to be there. Like, oh, you guys are killing me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Thank you very yeah. much, Jeff. Very nice to meet you both. Nice yep. Okay, what are we doing next here? Do you want to come out and go into your emergency select board meeting? Um, or do you want to continue with your work session? Is there anybody here that's here for the emergency select board meeting? Is that 5-5? Five, five, is that the road? Say that again. Is that about the road? What? No. What's no. This is, this is the financial... Um, Issues that we need to bring back to the town. Okay. We, we need to set up a special town meeting for that. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the meeting that's gonna that was supposed to take place this weekend mm -hmm. is not going to happen. Okay. So the board needs to sign a new warrant. We need to repost it. Town meeting will be on the twenty fourth. Okay. Because I was we, yeah. All right. Discussion wait on the road. The road. Okay. That's what I was gonna. Okay. So. On the 24th, you said? 24th will be a special town meeting to deal That's with a finance. special town meeting. Um, okay. Now, if you've, got, if you've got a topic you want to you have a discussion about, so weight limit on a road is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do, um, our regularly scheduled select board meeting is next Wednesday. So we do a work session on one Wednesday and okay. then a select board meeting on the next. Okay. And today is just a work session to deal with some of these things. And okay. again, it's recorded and the public's welcome and you know, we welcome input. Um, Michelle has an agenda for our select board meeting, and while you're right here, if you want to schedule it for next Wednesday and be on the agenda mm -hmm. and have that conversation, the beauty of that is it gives us a little bit of time to look into your topic Perfect. so we can have an educated conversation about Perfect. it. Yep. Okay. So if you'd like, she, if you want to give her your information, she'll put you right on the agenda for next week's meeting. Bryce Morse, M-O-R-C. And it's a discussion about the East Sangival Road. Okay. And the 18 wheel travel trucks that are going over it. From, I guess it's JD Reagan's pit now, I guess. Well, it used to be Haley's pit. Mm -hmm. Around here. And that's it. That's yep. Discuss. Okay. okay. Yep. I'll That'll get you on. Thank you so much. Thank you. You'll be on next week's meeting. She'll have you listed as oh, a top. It's very interesting to hear this, too. It's very nice. Yeah, well, you were part of the. You are part of the committee and it was neat to have Thank you here. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for all your work. I know it's not easy. It's not. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bryce. We'll see you. Matt, did you want to, did you want to throw something in here? I know, um, I don't know if you guys knew, we're working on a, on a, Matt's working on, um, a Sangerville fun day at the park. Mm -hmm. You knew about that. Yep. Um, did you have any discussion you wanted to talk about? Um, not particularly, but um, I'll just kind of give an overview of where we're at with it. But um, so September 7th is the day that we picked, um, 10 o'clock start time. I think we're going till 5 as long as people are still there. We'll cut out early if people are done for the day. But um, so we really we brought in, um, or we're going to bring in live music at the gazebo. Um, a bunch of yard games for the kids, uh, bounce houses, uh, food. The friends of the Sangle Fire Department can cook food. Um, we're going to do touch a truck event with obviously some of our trucks as well as some on Dover and Guilford's trucks. And, or, yeah, Dover, Guilford, and Dexter, I think, responded to me so far. Um, and then recently we just decided that we want to add a car show to that as well. So that's going to be all going on that day. 
And really, the whole purpose that we thought for it was just to get everybody together and build back on being community. a town together, community and friends and neighbors <clears throat> and do something together. And if it happens every year, great. I think it would be great that, you know, you and I, Jeff, were talking the other day about the possibilities that that park and rec area yeah. actually has. It and blows my mind. I went down to look at the car show venue part of it. Matt had invited me down. I've lived here my whole life. And I was amazed how little I knew about that park. I just, I was floored how nice that park is. It's and really, it's, it's, a, it's a huge thing that we should be utilizing. And I, if it gets everybody to, to come together and on top of that, to get some people interested in helping the rec committee to right. keep it the way that it is. And that's all my real goal is. So. Yep. And we're talking about a free event, so this isn't this isn't a you know shake the tree for money deal at all. This is a hundred percent about community involvement and about people understanding what they have at that park. Um, and it will we'll probably do it by donation because it's Sangable Fire Friends of. It's going to have a cost yeah, for food. Yeah, so the food we're going to do by donation. Uh, Maine Highlands Credit Union, obviously, they are a big sponsor for it. They've donated a bunch of money to help with uh, getting the live music, and they are also going to provide close to a dozen personnel to help with all the yard games for the kids and all that, which is great. Um, the Friends of Sango Fire Department is going to do the food and we'll just have a donation jar and if somebody wants to pay a couple bucks for their burger then great if they don't come out and have a good time and that's really just where we're trying to go with it i just like to see people show up and have a good time and, and work towards community yeah and you know maybe it gives somebody the idea of something different to do with that space down there too i mean it's mm -hmm. so many possibilities with that area down there so but I'm looking forward to it, so hopefully people will show up. I was just floored how beautiful it is down there. I'd, uh, I'd driven by it a thousand times. I don't take the time to stop. Yeah, no, we've had, Bentley has had um, T-ball down there. Um, recently, we bought kayaks for everybody, so we go down and it's perfect for the kids to be able to get into the kayak and, you know, the, between the dock and everything, it just works out really well. So... They paddle around like crazy, lots of times in circles, but it's very mm -hmm. nice. It's, yeah. it's just a fun time. They have a great time just playing in the water right there. I think, you know, where we'll have the car show part of it, touch of truck stuff, food. Um, there's stuff that for adults to do. There's stuff for kids to do. I really would love to see people that haven't met you guys. And hopefully you guys can be there to come out and introduce themselves. And I'll be there. And... Um, we got bounce houses. Bounce houses, yeah. Try to keep them in the far corner. <laughs> keep the munchkins <laughs> occupied. Uh, yeah, no, they, uh, Maine Highlands has a ton of yard games. We got some actual like cornhole type setup for adults to play and so on. And just a, I, I guess uh, Maine Highlands used to pay for some music in the gazebo years ago. and Well, not years, but a few years ago. And, you know, I'd just like to see that happen. And that gazebo is really, that's quite a little place right there, so. Mm. Yeah, what's nice is there's electricity there's on the inside. There's power right to it, right? yeah, there's outlets so right inside of it. It's last so. year we put a tree up in yeah. there and lit it for the first time, so. Yeah. Um, I'm wicked excited about this. I, when, when we started having real turnout at our town meetings, it just, for me, it was a flashback to years ago. And this is just an effort to move in that direction. I know, you've got to bring the community back together. You yeah. just, it's a great way to start. Mm. Yep, no, we have, you know, guys on the fire department helping with it. We have uh, people on the rec committee helping with it. Some, um, you know, community members, and I think it'll all work out good. I, yep. Anybody that wants to help out, <laughs> more power to you know. We got through the, Gary was working on the banner and they got through that today. Yep. 
to you know put a banner out by the road, like oh, a yes. four by eight, a three by eight banner for you know for about a week before it happens, and um, all the trophies are ordered for the car show. Yep. I really like the car show idea. I think that'll draw a crowd. Well, yeah, we get talking about it, and it draws a lot of people. Because a lot of people obviously have that interest, and but also if. If you're going to bring your kid down to play yard games for a few hours and you don't want to sit there the whole time, it gives you something to do too. You know? All right. You know, I, if Maine Islands girls are going to watch the kids and do their games and stuff, then you can take a few minutes and yeah. check something else out. And hopefully people, I know there's a lot of people that are interested in the cars and bring them all in. Yep. And I... You know, the last the last couple of town meetings has been has been really good. <laughs> the yeah. whole thing has been really good. Yeah, I I love the direction we're moving in. Okay, what do we got next on our pile of things to do? Okay, so one of the things that you had discussed was committees. Well, because we're not going to have our town meeting on Saturday, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be the twenty fourth. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to just wait. Put the sign-up sheets out on the 24th for committees. Yes. Um, we're looking at a road committee and a budget committee. Was there another committee? Road and budget were the two biggies. Does Parks and Rec still have a committee? Are they still they, active? They do. There's only three people that are on it actively that I know of. And then there's a few that have voiced wanting to be a part of it to uh, Rhonda. Jason Higgins, Rhonda, Jason Higgins, and Lee Lorigan, I think, are the three that are still in it. Um, I told them that I was happy to go on there, and there's a couple other people, but we really just need to get back to meeting. And Does that committee, that committee still exist? It exists, yeah. yeah. They just, so just don't have a scheduled meeting? Just don't, don't have a scheduled meeting, and part of that was because... Um, Obviously, without a budget, there was no improvements to be made this year, so it wasn't a whole lot to meet about. Um, but we are going to have to obviously get together and do some cleanup before this event. So we're, I'm going to meet with them again Sunday and we'll talk about that. So if we do a committee sign-up sheet at the at this next town meeting, um, budget committee was was one that we need to talk about. Um, we probably ought to put this rec committee. I would put a sheet out. I know Rhonda spoke at the last town meeting saying, hey, you know, come help. But if there was a sign-up sheet where they could actually sign up and then she could get phone numbers and right. reach out to them and schedule a meeting. That's the point. Yeah, so of this I, is just the organization part yeah, of it. I can, I can create sign-up sheets with email and phone number and name yeah, I think for each one of the committee's budget, road, and park. Mm -hmm. And then... When we when they, they check in, they can sign up if they want to there. Can we have them in the town office for them to sign up? Sure. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I think some people, when they're in that line, they just they want to get through that yeah. line and get in. They aren't so much focused. But sure. somebody who wanted to will probably pay attention. So yeah. post it for another week or two after the town meeting in the town office? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And make an announcement that it's there. Yeah. So we're looking at, at the budget committee. Um, the rec committee. Mm -hmm. What other committees do we want to? Road. 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 Yep. Just uh, those three. We talk some of the forestry committee for for the town lots, but at this point, I think we, I think we take the basic needs that we have and and get through that, don't you? Those three. I mean, yeah, I I do like the forestry committee idea because I I do too. I mean, right now is not a great time to cut, but from what I understand from people about that lot that we're having trouble getting to, mm -hmm. um, that is very heavily wooded, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe we ought to look at that. I what? did I did find a bunch of information. Um, the forestry plan mm -hmm. um, when I was digging around for something else at the town manager office in the old building mm -hmm. I brought those files with me back to the town mm -hmm. office so if you want to stop in and see him sometime 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was actually going to try to stop and have a talk with Toby Hall at some point because he's probably the most knowledgeable about them. Yep. All the lots, you know. People like him, like John. Yeah. There's, there's some people in town that I don't know anything about cutting wood and I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but you need, we still need reference on what to do with it. Right. I could walk that lot and not be able to tell you what needed to be done. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, if, if you select it, cut it, it's going to keep it healthier, correct? Correct. So, it's... In 30 years on that, that's a... To me, you, sh- you should be in a lot... Uh, Sangville grows wood. Right. If it's managed right, it grows wood very right. well. It doesn't grow one species, it grows a whole... <laughs> abundance of species, but generally it grows wood very well. It seems foolish to leave it alone completely and ignore it when, yeah. you know, it's a replenishing bank account in a theory. You know. Right. You cut it and let it do its thing again, and then however many years we revisit it again. So we'll put the put the forestry committee on if you think we should. I yes. See if we have any interest in it. Start there. I guess. <laughs> right. Right. If nobody's yeah. interested, then we'll have to figure out right. a different approach. Yeah. Are there any other committees that have that have fallen away over the years? Not that, that I can see. Yeah. You know, the other one is the town hall committee, but that that group of people is still there. Yeah, we just have to reactivate them, and that's all. Um, and the beauty to that committee was it was such a cross-section of the town. And there was people with all different ideas, and it was, you know, it's, that was a good committee. But when we get to that point, we, we can talk about that later. I don't think we need to deal with that right this second. No, not, not right now. Not until we kind of figure out what, what we need to do next. Mm. I mean... The public made their voice heard at town meeting that they want to pursue that. We put the bids out to get an engineer. Mm -hmm. So it's now up to the board to say, yes, we're going to, okay, let's hire the engineer, have him get his prices, Mm -hmm. come back to the town, give the town an option. Right. So. But he won't, he stated tonight, he. He doesn't want to do that until he hears from the board. Until he hears from, right, That's until perfect. he hears from the committee. All right. Yeah. So, I, I guess... I don't think I'm grasping it all correctly, you know. Yeah. Right. So, I guess the next step in that process is to call the committee together. Right. And, obviously, they're probably going to hear this all on tape anyway, but right. call them together, set up a meeting so that we can get him involved if, mm-hmm. and see if it's feasible for us to con- continue. I think he's looking for the committee's involvement more for vision. So his mm-hmm. vision is aligned with the vision of the town. Right. I think that's what he's looking for. So, and I don't think we need that until we're to that phase. Bless you. Allergic to hay. <laughs> <laughs> and they covered in it. <laughs> So I guess I guess my question would be, we've we've dragged the building on, we've dragged the building on, we've dragged. So yeah, when do we start the next phase? Like how soon do we start the next phase? That's right. My feeling is the bids need to go out sometime during the winter for a spring for a spring date. Right. Um, so we want the committee to meet prior to prior that. Prior to that, that's right. And I would personally like to see us back on the first floor December 1st of next year. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, unless he tells us that foundation project is going to take 12 months to do it, well, then we'll step back and reassess. But I can't, if we can't see anything that, if we put it out to bid this winter, it couldn't be done by next December 1st, you know. Well, I myself have a lung condition. So I have to be careful if right. we are in that building with dust. Like, I could not sit closer to you because you're covered in hay. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to breathe. Right. So with that, as far as construction, you right. know, how no, we would have to, that? We would have to complete the foundation, the roof, and get the building squared up. The excavation would have to be done. And I think we'd have to be through the first floor. Right. And then once we're there... We're not in anybody's way. They're upstairs. They're upstairs. Okay. And that's how I was. Even if they, we decide right now we can afford that part of it, or 
if we want to go down that road or right. I mean I know we do eventually but yep. you know well then there's other avenues that we need to investigate um, there's always a bond bank you know right. those are long term bonds I'm not sure how bonds work I'd have to be explained someone would have to talk to me about them but I know that like Guilford has done them for their road projects right so maybe that's an option, but right. it's just basically a loan that's being guaranteed by the people. When you put a bond through the the guarantee in the loan. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that we need a little bit of time is pushing the grant end of it as hard as we can. You know, to hear it from the engineer and then to hear it from Leslie and the committee, you know, this nonprofit, and Jody mentioned it too. Mm -hmm. She she was she thought if we did anything that, um, you know, that was the route to take because it opens up so much more. Which goes grand. back, which goes back to Patrick's plan of making that building a five hundred one three C. Right. I know as we proceeded as a committee. You bring up that word, and and there was total resistance. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that hasn't changed. Right. Um, but if that being said, if we like if we had our historical society was actually a nonprofit, and we was able to, I never knew you could combine the two and Me ride piggyback on them for the grant money. We need to really figure out, and I don't know if it's us that look at it, um, we really need to dig hard for grant money. Because, you know, for the citizens of Sangerville to fund a full renovation of that building... It's too much? It's too much. We all know it. Could we renovate it to the point where we can move back in and have a serviceable municipal office there? Absolutely. I think we can do it for the money we've allocated. One of the, his concerns, which was one of mine as well, is you don't want to spend four hundred thousand dollars to move back in it and then decide later you want to renovate it to historical standard and undo what you spent hundred or two thousand dollars to do so that you could use it. Yes, right. the basement and the first floor need to be set up for <clears throat> the long term end game, even if we don't do it. It right. should be set up for it. Right. And I think everybody was on board with with the foundation, the drainage, the the roof, the the structural stuff, and renovating the first floor. Well, the thing is, when he talked tonight, I didn't realize what role the dirt beside it, beside the foundation, played. Oh yeah, I did. Huge. I did not realize, you know, the type of soil is affecting the foundation. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, you watch it tip in, and of course the dirt's going to follow it, but I had did not think of the so other you, avenues. You walked around that basement with us, mm -hmm. and you saw where the walls are pushed. Yep. Now go outside and walk around the outside, and right where they're pushed is pockets where the water sets. And yep. You can't escape. And it's got hydraulic pressure when it freezes, and that's what happened. Yep. And so you can see it plain as day. When you go down and look at the walls, and then you go outside and walk around the outside of it, which we did that night, and you can clear see, as a bell. You can right. see them absolutely, but I never. I was thinking water, but didn't think about the dirt itself, the types of dirt right. that are under there. Yep. So that makes that makes more sense to me. So, how did your meeting go the other day with that other company? It, oh, I know what you're talking about. I you lost me there for a minute. <laughs> um, that's just just an application process. Just just looking for money. That's all. Okay. And that's what we did. We, we said, "Hey, look at us. We want some." <laughs> and we won't go anywhere, but it might. I I wrote a I wrote a email on line paper, and Michelle made it look pretty and sent it along. Basically, just asking to consider us for rent money for the building. So that's where we're at at that point. Okay. So if you guys end up getting 
super invested in the grant part of it. Um, and if you find out whether or not the historical society is a 5013C nonprofit, because um, the friends of is so I did a lot of grant writing for the fire department and stuff through that and I have a grant writer that I use that's very, very knowledgeable about this kind of stuff. And if you jump really? into that, she would, I'm sure, she, that's what she does. And um, she probably, I don't know how much, like she usually, most of the grants, federal stuff that she wrote for us, the only thing that she got paid is if you were awarded a grant. There's like mm -hmm. 3% if you were awarded the grant or something along that. Is that Elsina? Yeah, yeah, but she did a lot for us because <clears throat> of the situation that we were in and she she did it all like for free either way um, for us just because she felt bad in the situation that we were in but she's really good she so it might be a, on a person to reach out to it's on a different direction but it just cool. dawned on me are we going to have any of that new gear here by the time we have that weekend should yeah i'm maybe guessing maybe. within a couple weeks i should have to i mean maybe not let people touch it but it might be good to yeah no show be. some of it off and it'll be you know, right here, same with, you know, with the touch of truck is you know, the doors are all open and everything's there to be looked at. There'll be guys, a couple of firefighters to show people around and stuff, but that will all be Great. on display. So I'm That's sure cool. people would like to see that. Yep. Mm. So, but yeah, she, she's been a huge help with, even if it wasn't writing a grant, just pointing me in the right direction of where the possibilities are because mm -hmm. she knows where every grant for every different you know avenue is and there's probably places that we don't even know give out money for certain things that she could point you in the direction of. So. Hmm. And she gets paid if you're awarded a grant. That's how she did it as far as our FEMA grants. Um, I don't it may be different in different entities, I don't know exactly, but just hmm. just something to keep. And you have mind. contact information for her? Mm -hmm. You do. Cool. All right, what's next? Well, <clears throat> so I've been working on your financial for the general government. And there's so many ways I could do this <laughs> with the payroll, with everything. Using the 2023 approved budget, mm -hmm. when we get all done, and I have, have tried to project out as far as keeping the office open. With that pay rate rate of pay now, we are going to come up short by hold on nine thousand six hundred and seven dollars in the mm -hmm. overall account. And that includes Robert Peter to pay Paul to get to the bottom line. It does, yeah. and it doesn't give you any room to hire a town manager. Right. So, and that's the other piece that we really need to kind of discuss. Next is <clears throat> what are we what are we going to do? What uh, we've got? I haven't received any more um, applications for town manager other than the one that came in the other day. Mm -hmm. um, deadline is Friday for any applications, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure. What, but the next step for that is either. I think the next step is. We've got to look at what we've got for applications. While we're doing that, we've got to figure out how we're going to pay them. Exactly. <laughs> Which is what this meeting was originally about, the one that... Right, the one Saturday was supposed to be that, and unfortunately because I left a word in that I shouldn't have, is why we have to change the meeting. That's right, I understood that. So... Um, so so what we need to make this administrative budget work, we need to know if we hired somebody three weeks from right now, what they're going to be paid, what their benefits are going to cost, and what it costs to complete the year. Right. Um, we're down to four more payments for health insurance. So you're looking at about five thousand dollars there. 
I do, and I didn't bring mine tonight. I just bought this. Um, I haven't done the breakdown if we use the 2024 proposed budget. That I can do tomorrow when I get back to the office. Um, so what was the number on the insurance for the balance of the year? It'll be about $5,000 to add a new person to the budget. And there's a big if, do we hire somebody for 30 or 32 hours or 40 hours? You know, these are all things, each hey. candidate has a different idea. Exactly. There was, there was quite a price difference during that too. Mm. Maybe I didn't get it, but it's sitting right at home. Uh, I'm trying to get to my... All right, well, that's not what you want. Yeah, so it's four thousand, about forty five hundred dollars per person for now to get to the end of the year, because we have September, October, November, December. There's income protection um, that's paid by the town. That's really small as far as a, a premium, so you'd be well under a hundred dollars for that for a new person. But you also get to figure in your Social Security and your Medicare match to whatever you hire them for. I know that interim town managers were getting $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. I believe Patrick was getting more than that. <clears throat> His gross was like $1,115. Um, $1,115. And he was full time. And he was full time. Forty hours. But he was also one that was capable of being road both commissioner. a road commissioner and a town manager. Right. He exactly. Was wearing two hats. Right. And what was his gross? His was one thousand one hundred and fifteen. And Jeff was working ten to fifteen hours a week, and his gross was four hundred and fifty a week. And he had 15 hours a week or something? 10 to 15, yeah. 10 to 15. And his was 30 hours an hour. What was Patrick's based on? Do you, you, don't, you don't know? I don't know. I'm almost in the same family. 27.5 million. Patrick was a pretty good buy. <laughs> and both of them do roads. Right. So. You did say 1,115 gross, right? Yep. For 40 hours. 40 hours. Yep. Yeah, 2787. Do you think we can hire somebody for $27 an hour that can do all of those things? I don't know. I think we'd be hard pressed. I also think that at the beginning, even if they can't do it, we need to hire them as an interim road commissioner until we find a road commissioner so mm -hmm. that we can do something. Some of the projects, yeah. Right. So, like, if you're looking at your road budget right now, No, you guys don't have this one. This is I ran this just before it come up. Come up. So I'll pass it over to you. This is this is your balance to your different accounts. So if you come across, I don't want you too close to Michelle. This one. So. <laughs> so basically, we got thirty nine for summer maintenance and twenty eight for paving. Yep. So I don't even know what you would hire a road 
Get over there for me, Where are we at at grading? Where's grading? Should be on the Usama Roads list. Should we come in here right there? Almost got a twice color. Oh, supplies. Grading supplies. Yeah, it's a chart of accounts is a disaster zone. 20,000. Doesn't say we spent anything on grading. Which we have. We haven't received a bill from Lawson. No. Nope. Not that I know of. Okay, that, that's, that brings up another. Because Chris said to me the other day that he hasn't sent a bill from this spring on grading. Chris hasn't? No, Chris hasn't. I haven't seen anything on grading. You had to run a budget when you don't have a bill to pay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I. Can we put it in the contracts? I'm, I'm having her write contracts for everything. Right. Right. The, we must receive a bill in 30 days if you want to get paid, something along yeah, those lines. I mean, how, <laughs> yes, because right now we're, we're trying to do, we'd like to do a few projects before the end of the year. And well, we, we don't, don't know where we're at. Right. Well, and we're going to be coming up on budget time. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking at, at looking at budgets probably November. Right. So that we can be ready for December thirty first closing the books. Right. We don't know what we spent this spring grading roads. Pretty hard to project next year. I don't even have a clue where we stand with anything at this point because I don't have an audit. Mm -hmm. So, is the grading the only thing we don't have? Have uh, as far as I know a bill the, for? Yep. That's the only thing I can think of. Can we of. follow up on that? Okay. Talk, to, talk to Steve and talk to Chris and see if we could get a bill. I, I, I will double check. Um, I had talked to Scott. He, I, I think he said he's got like 500 bucks maybe. Okay. But he was kind of holding it because of budget issues. He was mm -hmm. just, it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. You know. But the, the grading. Nice, still be nice to know where we're at. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So the original budget was 104, and we've spent 65. I wonder what we spent 65 on. Right? Am, yep. am I reading that right? Yep, you're reading it right. Because it, it's just. Yeah, because this is your final, this is your balance right here. Right. Mm hmm. So every time, like you see, number 70, that's here, and then this is the breakdown. The breakdown of it. Of 77. Right. Okay. Mm. That's, uh, uh, what, what have we done to spend that? Well, this is your budget, but you what you spent over here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Because all of that work we had done, unless all, a bunch of that work that we had done last fall didn't get paid till after the first of the year, right? Like should have been paid. The, should have been paid by December thirty first, because that's when our books close. So all I, I just been don't paid. know. I don't know where we spent it. I don't. I don't. Hmm. It doesn't seem to this me that any, forward, yeah. anything's been. I mean, there's been things done, but. Not that kind of done. Not big projects. Not, so. not 65 done. You know. Mm. Especially when we ain't even got a bill for, for grading. grading. So let me pull those accounts. I can pull each individual account and it will show the vendor that we paid. So we can pull, I can pull that stuff out. So mm. you can look it over. That'd be really good. Okay. Mm. Because we've got some things to address. And yeah, and, and of course I don't go out my road very often, but the section of road that's been supposed to be redone for the last seven years, right in the center of my lower field mm -hmm. in the road, there's a rock that's up there about this high. And I got an idea that's a monster under there because it don't wiggle, yeah. you know. and. I don't think Chris can won't plow over that this winter. Yeah. You know, they said they broke a uh, cutting edge on the grader on it this spring, grade net, but I mean, I would have thought in the spring you could see it. But. Mm.
So what we started talking about was was the town manager. We're talking about budget to bring to the town meeting so that we can fill this position for town manager and our road commissioner. Right. Um, so we're going to have to come up with a plan of attack for interviews. But right. We, so but we need to cross this dollars and cents bridge first before we can start talking to people about a job. Yeah. Well, we could do interviews. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing an interview because maybe we have one that only wants seventeen dollars an hour. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I highly doubt it, but you know. Right. So right. one I mean, one that we've had has been interviewed by the old board. Yes. Um, and then there are two new that. ones. Yes. So you have three locals that I'm aware of. And we made the decision we really want to pull from our community or close to our community yep. for this position. I think we're all on the same page there. Yes. Which gives us, right now, as of now, three candidates to talk about. I was part of the interview with the one that's been interviewed, and he was he was um, interested in the thirty or thirty-two hour program, and this is good. He indicated he had a lot of budget experience and absolutely no road experience whatsoever, other than budgeting for it. That was my take in my conversation with him. So if if we do that, we still need to deal with the road commissioner part of it. Right. Okay, so I should be looking at trying to pull figures together for you between the summer road budget and the winter road budget for a road commissioner. Right. And then also plan or try to figure out if we were to put the old 2024 budget back in place, um, what we could pay for a town manager. Right. Because that may determine if we're looking for a part-time or a full-time person. Right. And I'm not opposed using two people to achieve a 40-hour job and getting a better job. Example, if we can hire somebody that can think that they can do everything but the roads, do it in 30 hours, and do it efficiently, and somebody that can come in for 10 hours a week and handle the road commissioner part of it. Right. You're right back at a 40-hour salary, but you're getting a lot better job. And obviously the 10-hour a week guy isn't going to want insurance or any of that stuff. Correct. They have to work 32 hours to be able to qualify for right. health insurance. So the, the Just man. looking at bang for the buck, right? You know, if, if you hire somebody that has no road experience for forty hours a week, and you're still leaving that that road thing that you got to deal with, right? When eventually we'll get back to that, will be the number one complaint in town again. I mean, right now it's well. I think it probably still is. Right now there one. there isn't really many complaints, right? No, I've heard a few. If you, I mean, if there, you need there, some. There, there has been some. I mean, I, I, I seem to get some every day, but to me, the, to me, a complaint is when somebody's angry. Right. And I haven't had anybody. No, me neither. Angry. Yeah. No. Had a no. lot of suggestions, though. Yeah. yeah. You have um, probably, I think there's six copies of some complaints that I put in your packet today. Mm -hmm. um, one of them. I believe is about a road sign, which we've already ordered. It just hasn't got here yet. Which one is that? The, the one on the Burroughs Road? No, nope, right on your, right to your, your arm. It's right over the whole pile of complaints. Oh, this is all the complaints. That's all the complaints, okay. yeah. Good. <clears throat> and she just simply wanted to know where her sign was. It was a hidden driveway sign. But that's on order and it hasn't come in yet. Okay. Yeah. The, we, we dealt with this in our last selections meeting. Yes. We made the decision to order it. Yep. I'm okay. just waiting for him to show up. Casper Zach. There you go. Ms. Casper Zach, and we I are do, on it. I do <laughs> believe there are two complaints about the wheeler um, on the east end of the road. 
I think we had two right back to back one day. <coughs> Which one of them is his? <coughs> Um, mother, I, I believe. The one that just came in. And the other one is the neighbor. So other than that, I mean... Oh, and I, and I, I don't think there was ever a... Um, I, don't, I don't think they were ever banned from that road. That was never... I mean, we'd have put signs up if that was the... Uh, but I think it was just always a... Maybe we should talk to Rob, because I'm pretty sure Rob had kind of a... He just didn't use that end of the road, and right. everybody from Brown Pit that way kind of got used to not seeing that, you know. Where's the 299 North Dexter? It's got to be right here. That is... 299 North Dexter. Okay, so you have the, the Clark houses, the real yep. houses. George's Place, there's a driveway, like a road. So uh, just a little ways further, there's a, a white house and a huge field. Gotcha. And that's where we've had a lot of complaints. Okay, so it was the... Um, Jean Weeks. Jean Weeks property. Yep. And she's in Florida. Yep, and we've had a lot good. of complaints on that. That isn't that bad, is it? Because all of a sudden we've got a whole bunch of campers there. Uh -oh. And people are living out of the campers, but they're concerned about... Trash that's being blown around, um, sewerage, wh what is being used mm -hmm. to dispose of the sewerage and the water. Yep, I looked at buying that lot. There's, I think there's two septics on that lot. Yep, so um, Lance has gone out and he doesn't see any reason, any problem with it at this point. Yeah, because there's a little cabin there that they were living in that's An up to code, Irish? I guess. Yeah, well, the Irish Irish house? Yeah. And that was up to code, as far as I knew. So, um, but that's, that's the location. Okay, yeah. Two complaints on the same place. Yeah. And I actually had one person message me through um, Facebook Messenger concerning one of them. So. Now, this complaint on the washout near the end of, of the Clark driveway on the Gray Road. So that's going to be up on the hill. If you go... Do you know where Butch's yep, piece is? There so. was just after that, it creeps up. Yep. There's a driveway that curves right down hard, and it wa it ran, and then some of them had rains right down that driveway. Mm -hmm. And there is no ditching on that side of the road. Is it from a Dick Clark's house? I I don't know. <coughs> nice house is such. Yes. Up. Yeah. And then so it kind of ran out into the road, traveled with the road a little ways, and then went across the road. And the, it is. It's probably uh, this wide, four or five inches deep, you know. Like, 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 Washboard. Yeah. I was kind of in hopes that we could just get Scott to go up there at some point with his skid steer and just. Yeah. But. Was it just from a big rain event that caused it? Or? Yeah. Well, <laughs> multiple big rain events, you know. But not being ditched on that side's the biggest thing, yeah. you know. I mean, to go up and fix it and then have it happen next week would suck. Well, it, yes, but we have thirty-nine thousand dollars, and I we we have to prioritize. Right, <laughs> right. That's all. I uh, maybe a shot with this. <laughs> so I also sent you. Um, I don't know if you got it because I had your wrong email. I I still haven't got any emails on that. You haven't? I resend everything with your new email address. Unless, unless my phone ain't dinging and I just ain't seeing it here. But we had this um, proposal come when I went to look for IT services for our new computers that we received. Um, nothing. Zero. I'm going to have to send you a test just to see if you can get something. Because I forwarded all this stuff I sent to everybody to you and you're not getting nothing. So Eagle, when I went to check for IT services, I went to MMA's website, and they have Eagle Network Solutions mm -hmm. and a WG Technologies. I read all that that you said. Right, so Eagle has sent us a proposal. Um, they're willing to come out and meet with anybody to show them, explain them what they do, how they do it. Mm -hmm. um, from what I can tell, if I'm figuring it right, 
it would cost us $6,400 a year to have them be IT services. Mm-hmm. Unlimited phone calls. Um, if they had to come on site, they're only an hour and a half away. Mm-hmm. They're in Herman, Herman Holden, yeah. somewhere in that area. I sent this over to Melissa and had her look at this mm-hmm. to see if we were even in the right area for me. Like the, what do we get? The scope of what we get. Yep. And she gave it her blessing. Good. Um, yes, 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 is my answer from her. So, I have not heard anything else from anybody um, concerning a proposal, mm-hmm. touch base with me, nothing. That's about half what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It is a whole lot less than what we yes, had been quoted before. Yes. Yeah. So you said $6,400 for unlimited phone yep. calls. They could, they could patch in. Um, Correct. Now if yeah. they have to come out here, how many times do they come out in that? Or do they come out at all? Do we have to pay... Above and beyond. Usually, IT come. people do it right from remote. Well. Usually, right. um, they will come out. Um, well, I mean, if we had a computer crash and they needed to come out and set it right up, right. do we get four of those a year or zero of those a year? You right. know, right. There is. Okay, so per hour charges um, for services not covered by the agreement is one hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And to get them started, to get all the computers that we have in the office set up and going is like a thousand dollars. And they'll set all three of them up and have everything running for us. Take care of the licensing for all the different. Well, that sounds very reasonable to me. It sounds about half what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It sounds like they made a mistake and we probably should say yes. <laughs> <laughs> the guy is very nice to deal with. Um, I've talked to him a couple different times about getting the, the plan here. He sent an email, let me let me come up and talk to you. So if we want him to come do a presentation, I'll call him next and have him come at the next board meeting mm-hmm. next week. I think this is a sooner than later thing. We yep. have computers that don't work. Right. right. We have brand new computers sitting there collecting dust. Budget-wise, where does that put us? Because that comes well, from administrative. that's where we get snagged up. Because yeah. without that budget from 2024, or if they approve the $10,000 that's in the warrant, the very last article, that would get us going. Mm-hmm. If they didn't approve to go back and fix the general government account, but it authorized us for the 10000 that would get us up and going. Mm-hmm. And this is one of those sooner than later things. Yeah, but then, then again, we still could meet with him ahead of time, yep. so we know as soon as we do or do not get the budget increase, then right, then we can go from there. Right. So I could have him come on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. You have our meeting is on that Saturday. Yep. So if everything goes through town meeting, I can call him Monday morning, and we can start the process. So I'll call him and have him come up on Wednesday night. Okay. That'll work. I like that. That was good news. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was. I was very excited. Um, if, like I said, I'll double check and I'll call Melissa just to confirm that we're all on the same page. Right. Um, but it's hard for us to make a decision on something we don't understand. Right, exactly. And Just somebody like her to describe to us what we're looking for. <laughs> right. And Caleb is very good about dumbing it down. <laughs> yeah. even, even I understood some of the stuff. Right. So, so, no, he was, he was good. Um, in your packet, I did actually find another piece that goes to the building. Um, that I copied for you. It goes back to October of 2019. Mm-hmm. So that's just to add to your packet of information. I almost feel like I've seen this before. That's the first time I had seen it. So I didn't know if you guys had it in your pack, but... No, I think I've seen this quite, have you seen quite it a while before? ago. Okay. A long time ago. 
Um, I have been over, like I said, um, in the old building. I found a lot of stuff. I've also been able to look and assess what is there that needs to be thrown away mm -hmm. or disposed of somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if we're going to be going with an engineer and getting the ball rolling. We probably need to get some of that stuff out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where you stand. Like Storage. Like what? Storage and disposal. What's the next step? Right. I mean, Shredding records that we don't need Sammy to Sammy and I can go in there. And we can get into some of the records um, and start destroying stuff. The stuff that's supposed to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, yeah. you've got stuff that actually is back to 1978 in some cases that really doesn't even have much. Right. I, I don't know why we have it, in all honesty. Because we don't want to be flogging around in there in October because it's going to be mighty cold. Um, oh, you'll be all right. You got some more soup. Get my mittens on, exactly. So mm -hmm. we can do that whenever whenever the board wants us to start mm -hmm. doing that. Um, unfortunately, true, the, the matter is, you know, do we get paid or do you want to enact the comp time thing? That yeah, call so time is not in your personnel policy, from what I can tell. Um, I thought it might be something like, I do not care about me, but mm -hmm. I thought maybe Sammy would like to have some extra time if we worked it off that way. Um, now, as far as destroying records... I mean, can we just buy a paper shredder and shred them, or do you have to have somebody professionally do it? No. How do you do that? Um, we have can, a little... Can we have Matt Burnham? We can have Matt Burnham. <laughs> <laughs> you bring a bear on. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> Sunday practice in the parking lot. <laughs> as, long as, as long as we know that they are destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, we have a small shredder. We can bring the shredder over and run it. Mm -hmm. um, Although it might require power. I don't think it's battery operated. I think it's plugged in. Mm -hmm. it that could be an issue. Could you bring any of it in here and plug the shredder in? Yeah, we could do that. I mean, you're close enough. Okay. Yeah, it, yeah. Or just 100 foot extension cord. Yeah. Throw a window. I mean, either way, yeah. you got power already. Yeah, there you go. That would work. Um, like anything that you need. If you need an extension cord set up, just let me know and I'll run it over for you. you know? Well, and to mention too that Matt and the crew, the fire department, has always been, anytime I call, they make it happen. So mm -hmm. this week, elections decided that we're going to do a surprise. Um, we're going to test your equipment. My equipment was in the old building. And I had like an hour to, to get it moved. Called Matt. Matt made it happen. Came over, lugged it down, got it all set up was tested, passed all our tests, we're good to go for election. So, just appreciate what he does. Anything you need, uh, I know most of the guys are the same as me, but anything you need, if you need help plugging stuff or whatever. Yep, no, nope, he's always been there. So, the taking care of the old records and, get, and getting through, I think the first decision we need to make is the stuff we need to keep, where are we putting it, how are we dealing with it, are we getting a pod, are we storing it in the town garage while right. this building's under construction. We need to make some of those decisions. We do. Um, and then the stuff that we're not toting along with us that needs to be destroyed, we need to make that decision too. Right. Who determines that and, and who destroys them. And well, I have the dispositional records, which is set up by the state archives, and I've downloaded the newest version. Mm -hmm. So I printed it off, and that will tell you exactly. Um, payroll records, if somebody dies, you have to keep them for 60 years. If, you, if an employee leaves, it's seven years. It tells you everything that you need to do, yeah. from jail records to school records to whatever. So I do have that. Um, but as far as what are we going to be doing in the office for keeping stuff, um, I keep getting back into the old records. If we do put it in the, if we do do one of the pods you had talked about before, how cumbersome is that 
And like, what is inside the pod for us to put the stuff on? Are they in books, boxes? Do you know? They're, they're an empty square box. Okay, so we need to have like some shelves? Yeah. Maybe? Or storage boxes and stacked boxes in it. Right. So that we can find, like, the biggest thing we keep getting requests for, obviously, a birth, death, and marriage. Right. So those have to be easily accessible for us. Right. Yeah. So, well, like these records you're going to keep for seven or 60 years or whatever, those can be put in boxes and stacked in the back. Yeah. And then, I mean, that, that's just an idea. You know, if we get into construction on this building, we've got to deal with our with our storage situation. Right. And that may not be the right answer. That was just something I had thought of as, as a, a unit that we idea. could set in front of the door, load it, and then move it over and put right. it in put a lock on the door to it and put it in our locked building. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense. I think it's our only option. I mean, how many heated storage places are around here? Not many. Not many. And the cost on that would be huge. Mm -hmm. The only downfall we have there is the only bay that's heated is the bay that Newt's use now. Mm -hmm. And it's the work bay, which doesn't really matter, I guess, but it's the smallest bay at all then, so we gotta take that into consideration that we probably only have, I mean, I don't even know how many. And you can get those in multiple units. I mean, you can get them four by eight, by six feet tall, and you could get two or three of them, and put them against the back wall and separate your records accordingly. The beauty to them is, um, you know, they're, they're nice and tight, they lock, it's secure storage, and, you set it in front of the door and you load it, and then you take it over and set it where it goes, and it's done. You don't handle the stuff two or three times. Right. That was what was attractive to me about that that option. Absolutely. Even if it's not a heated bay, even if it is just in our building, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not heated now. Right. So, you know, I mean, I don't know how important it is for it to be heated, but yeah. locked up and secure is the biggest. The bottom line is, even if it's cold storage, if there's no moisture, there's no mold. So, you know, if it's dry, I mean, it's paper goods, it should be fine. Right. But the beauty to that, if somebody breaks into our building, our records are still in a steel container with a lock on the door. And to get that fire in, no matter where you put them, they can get that fire in. Right. You know, so I, I just, I view it as, number one, simple and cost-effective and time-effective for transporting everything, not moving it two or three times. Right. But I also view it as very secure. I would feel better with them locked like that. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's options. You can, you can rent them, you can buy them, you can do whatever. I think until this building thing is, is finished, then we're looking at something like that. Right, we're going to have to move and do something. I'm not as comfortable taking them to, a, like, down the street to Marty's storage unit, putting them in a storage unit. I just, I don't, I think you're asking for trouble, and... Well, and right there is accessible for her. Right. You know, traveling a ways kind of stinks. I mean, I know Marty's isn't that far, but... Right. But it's just, I, I think it's on our property. It's up to us to manage it. It's kind yep. of got a double lock system on it once it's in that building. You know, the building's locked. Yep. The box is locked. I, I feel secure with that. I think it's I think it's a good idea. Yep. Um, so we just need to figure out pricing and again well, we're gonna if it's gonna rent. fit in our budget. If it fits in our budget, if we're gonna buy, we're gonna rent, we're gonna put it what size so we need. Where do we even start calling? Do you have any idea where to be looking for so there's one company, it's called Pods, P-O-D-S. Okay. I don't know if they service this area or not. That's what I found online when I was looking around for solutions. Okay. Um, the auto auction I go to, um, they have brand new containers. They've got one bay, three bay, and four bay. So the four bay is a 40 footer with 10, 10 foot cubicles with doors on the sides of each one. Oh, no kidding. Or you is that just like a Connex <clears throat> It's a hyped up version of that, and they're new. Yeah. The stores you get rubber gaskets on the doors, and they'll you can leave them right outside. The water water resistant. That's an option. 
with the Yakos around? No, I'd, I'd rather... I'd rather be in the building, I think. My, just my gut feeling. Me too. But one of those units, you know, if, if we bought one of those or if we, if we rented, rented them, I just, I, I, I think it's the only option we have to, to do it. So now we just need pricing. Right, because we can't put it in our rented space. There's no room. You should call main trailer. Main trailer? Okay. Because I, th I think they do a pod type thing. Plus they also do Connex boxes. Like mm -hmm. you can buy good used, like an 8x8x20 eight by eight by Connex box for like 2500 bucks mm -hmm. from them. Right, and that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at is, you know, if we did that, you drop it here, you put everything in it, and then you move it over there and it's done. Yeah. When this project's all done, you pick it up and bring it back over here and put the stuff away. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna load the stuff all in your van or in a, in a truck or whatever, and then you're gonna move it to here, and then you can move it over there, and you can <laughs> unload it. And, you can move it again. Yeah. And yep. it's just secured by a passage door, and then it's open to the public. Right. And you got people going in and out of there. I just I like the idea of the lockbox. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I'll investigate, see what I can do with that. Um, other than that, I really don't have a whole lot. Um, That's good. You're hungry. <laughs> Should I eat by game? <laughs> right. All right. I should have done that. <laughs> I left my wife. I left my wife to finish loading the last hundred bales and figure out how to cover it. That's what she was texting me. Where's the tarps? <laughs> I don't know if it's raining now, but it was booming when I when it showed up. So yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so to get back where we started earlier, uh -huh. why did we give permit? Uh, you don't know why, but I. Uh, so I. I Jason Higgins called today. Yeah. They've been taking wood chips. There was a pile outside of the fenced in area where the little play area is yeah. in the park. That was for another project. And basically it was just Jason and Peter Willie having the same time to get together because Peter was gonna bring his tractor down and yeah. get it done. Well. I guess Jeff gave people permission to take the chips that were donated to our park. I wasn't aware of that. I've no. seen two separate trucks loading truckloads of chips there, but I don't know who they were. One of them's right up here, but I mean, if they get permission, it's just past Kimball's on the right. It's the next house. There's like a bunch of trees. Well, if you so it's the next next one from Honeywell Ave. Yeah. And there's I mean there's quite a pile there. I rode by. So are there any chips left? Are they gone? I, I think they're all gone. Yeah, pretty much all gone. Wow. And I'm taking it somebody's upset about that. But Jason's not happy. I mean, yeah. I would have thought that the first call would have been on Jeff's part to the to the people that rec board to find out if there was right. that was going to be used for something, you know. What do we do with that? I don't know. I don't know because the donation came from Highwood Products. You did. And the board, um, of course it was said that the board should have approved the donation, which didn't get done. Um, but then when they got done filling the playground area, it was this huge pile. And I can't remember who called. We had several calls that we gave Jeff, you know, what it, can these people take the chips? Mm -hmm. Finally, Jeff said, yeah, just have them go get them, because it's just a pile there. Hmm. So they were still getting them as of today. Yeah. Maybe we ought to put a cease and desist on that. If we know who's taking them, or, or put a note on them that, that uh, they're no longer free for the taking, so to speak. Right. Can't really blame the people who had permission to do no, it. No, I mean, if they get permission, I'm. <laughs> yeah. we, we can't ask them to bring it back at that point. You know? Right. Right. So I'm taking it. Jason's got projects he can't finish because he doesn't. Well, know. I mean, he so had a. Uh, they had yes. things to do with them. Yes. Yeah. Right. 
if we know who the people are, maybe we should just talk to them, one of us, somebody, Michelle. Yeah. I know one that called and asked, but I don't know if he ever went and got the chips, because yeah. after I talked to him, he's like, he, he never showed up to take them. So I don't know if he actually ended up going to take them or not, and that's that um, Chris Palmer, I think is his name. Do you know where he lives? He's up. He's on 23. I don't know the number. 73, maybe? Hmm. 73, I would think, would be pretty close to. 73, somewhere handy to the bottom of the hill, just past the ball field. Hmm. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, so yeah I'm not sure where we go. The hill is about 100, maybe. So. I don't know what to do. We need we need to figure out how to get them to stop taking what's left and then figure out what to do with it beyond that. Right. I mean, again, if we had the right committee put back together, we'd have a little more control over this. Well, and I don't think there was a whole lot of communication right. between our that office was. and and the rec department. Right, great. But there needs to be. Yep, there does. Absolutely. I think that's kind of been one of Jason's biggest concerns over the last couple of years is just that there was zero communication. Yeah, yeah there was, um, like for the town office to know what was going on at the park, there was some real gaps there. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can, going forward, you know, have Jason come in and meet at the budget committee. Mm -hmm. You know, There's a lot of revamping to do there. Yeah. The thing is, we don't want to. We don't want them to lose interest in what they're doing either, and I think they had it mm -hmm. to a degree lost interest. Yep. And we don't want that. Exactly. No, I mean ten years ago they were doing. The biggest that made the whole thing was that soccer field. Mm. You know that was a huge, that was huge, huge change, and and. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jason was the head of that, basically. Mm. You know. Yeah, we don't want him to lose interest, for sure. No. Yeah. Well, and like, who is, um, like, purchase orders. This is something that wasn't done before, but Jeff said it needed to be done that way. So I've got a purchase order on my computer. So if they mm -hmm. come in, tell me what they need, give me the price, and get a quote or whatever, I can attach a purchase order and then bring it to you guys for your blessing. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, that's hard. But give a blessing every time they... It makes it really hard, especially like on my end, like to get the oil and stuff. It's like, it's already budgeted. It's mm -hmm. already been approved. Right. But every single thing still has to get a mm -hmm. purchase order, which is, it's tough. But does it really have to? I don't know. I have I, not seen anything in writing, but that doesn't mean it's there. I mean, purchase orders are okay, are great for her. To keep track. Because if you call and say, I need a PO for this, she can write it down, and then when the bill comes in, she knows right where to put it. There's no messing right. around. And I'm, I'm cool. Like, I 100% understand that. Like, call her up, Michelle, hey, I'm getting this under repair line of my budget. Do you have a PO number for me? Yep, let's go with this one. I tell them, can you attach PO to it? Perfect. She gets it. It's all lined up. Right. As long as it's budgeted. If it's not budgeted, then definitely it comes you know, here. Yeah. But it just seems foolish to me. And well, so I struggled the way, <laughs> the, the yeah. way that Jeff wanted me to do it, I was struggling with. Because he wanted us to sign the PO, not just track. Like... If Matt and I talked, and I know you're going after oil, and okay, put this PO on it, good to go. But that's not what Jeff really wanted me to do. He wanted a PO with my signature. You have a copy. It goes to the to the mm -hmm. vendor, and then it comes back through, and then I see it. So the big question is. So it was, it was kind of cumbersome. The big question is, what does the law say we have to do? Exactly. That's the question. Well, it's how we did it before doesn't really matter. A simple answer to that is, did he did he give a contractor a PO when he had them do work? I don't think so. Then, 
I mean, it's the same thing. I think we just need to know what the law right. says on it. I would be in favor of, of like with Matt, if he's got a budget for truck repair, he knows what he's got to spend. Yeah, I mean, we. And that's the biggest thing is like, like Michelle and I, like when I go to Michelle and say, hey, you know, we're close to halfway through the year, can you print me out where I stand with everything? So I track it, you know, if I see this line is getting too low, you know, obviously things change, but so if that stuff is budgeted already and you're mm. following that budget, that's what a budget's for. Right, that's exactly what a budget's for. You already know, you know, I've already budgeted for oil change, I budgeted for this, I budgeted for that, you know, so it all falls into that. It just seems foolish to mm -hmm. to do, approve it. It's like approving it three times, like going through the budget committee, approving it, towns voting on it, approving it. Fire and chief approves it. Fire chief approves it. Then we're going to have the slug board. And then Michelle gets to write a PO. And it's like, it seems like so much more work than you really need. Right. Correct. And I understand the reasoning behind that. So you don't just have somebody go into the store and saying, "We'll charge it to such and such." Right. And then it comes through the office. And I'm like, "The hell does this go to?" You right. know what I mean? But if we if we always use that PO numbers without having them have to approve everything, you and I can use a PO. Right. If I'm going to purchase something, you give me a PO so you know when it comes to you. If Where it doesn't have a number on it, something's weird. Right. Right. And it gives it this gives another set of eyes on it. Right. Just to say, you know, right. maybe we ought to look at this. Well, and right now we don't have a town manager. So it's you know, normally it would go from Matt and the town manager, get whatever it is, You're right. town manager initials it, goes to me, then goes to you guys for signature. So that piece of paper is gonna be seen ultimately four times. But it's all about, you know, accountability and making sure it it's is. out of the right account and making, you know. Yeah. Yep. So, well. we need to do one more thing, and that is we need to exit our work session, go into your emergency session, and sign those warrants for me for swipe and Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This okay. close. You were this close. You were this close. <laughs> this don't have to be executive. It's just signing the warrants for the for the town meeting coming, correct? Right. So we can leave the recorder going. Yep. Yep. Well, let's have it. I gave it to you. Oh. Okay. I gave them all to you. There were three sitting on the table. Okay. <laughs> so you just need one of them signed. I just need one. I prefer two so that I can have the town clerk <laughs> lobby. Wait, goes wait, right. Where's Mike's file? <laughs> where's Mike's file? Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be the last one in my file. Oh, right there. That looks like it might be it. Right here. It, it is. three pages. Okay. Okay. Do, do you actually have to say it's lit? Excellent. It's just going into it. Okay. It is 829, and we're going to exit work, work session, and we are going to go into an emergency select board meeting to... Um, for us to sign the warrant for a special town meeting. Now, let's read it. So you've gone through this one, Michelle, on the general government. Yep, we and needed to take the word raised and appropriated out. Okay. And, and just, just we're just going to appropriate the money from the general fund to bring What is the reason for that? Because we already raised it and then the budget was changed? Because no, in no, theory, you kind of got to raise it, right? We never raised it. You raise it in taxes. So because our taxes have already been committed mm -hmm. and we've already sent the bills out, we can't raise it. Ten you can only it. appropriate it. And um, when I was talking to MMA, there's a way that we should really write our articles different, which I did not know. You put and or. So somebody can make the option to, let's not raise that money, let's just appropriate it from this account. Mm -hmm. So it gives you... So it leaves it open on the floor? Yeah. So the people... 
We might have a, yep. If they have a different vision, you can go in that direction without a whole... Rigmarole. Yep. So, and or. That's a good idea. Yep. <laughs> and she gave me a whole... So this has been vetted by them at this point. At this point. Yep. This is correct. While she was on the phone with me, I took out every single raised in those accounts. Mm-hmm. And just changed it for appropriate. Yep. So you just changed to appropriate rather than put and or. Right. Okay. Because you can't do and or right now because we can't because raise we'll be any on, money. Because we'll be on the tax, right. tax cycle. Now I don't understand. At one point somebody, I think it was Josh actually from Hamlin that said you could actually do a second billing. In that case you would be raising again. Right, so it would be an option, but probably not a popular one. Right, exactly. So, one word, just one word. That's all it takes. Yep. Yep. Have you talked to Robbie Haley about this? Does he know that? I have not talked to him. We need to, we need to make a note to call Robbie in the morning, just let him know. We had an and or situation and we just changed the date to, to fix it. Okay. Have we put that out on social media yet too that it's been changed? I we, didn't see anything yet. We have put right on the front page of our website and both on Facebook um, that the, that has been canceled okay. for, for Saturday and the new date. Yep. And then tomorrow morning the first thing we <clears> do <throat> is put that up okay. on the website. Repost the new one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So you're gonna call you're gonna call Robbie tomorrow and just yep. tell him nothing's changed other than we had a glitch and it's gonna be the twenty fourth. Yep. Okay. We've also already called the pastor <clears throat> to make sure that we were all set there and we're okay. we're good there. That was my next question. Yep. <laughs> Did we call Paul Davis? Yep, we've called um, we touched yep. base with him and let him know that there was a date change also. Yeah, I saw him today, he knew who it And this is the 10000 that we talked about earlier in the meeting. Yep, for the IT services. I'm excited about that, by the Me way. Me too, actually. And I'm, I'm really excited after talking to the engineer tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And without Mike being here, does he have to come in and sign it, or just two signatures? Two signatures, a quorum. Yep, I'm good there. All right, then. I think we're up and rolling again. Okay. It's 8.34, and... Do I'm we have to make a motion to end this one? No, it's really not a... Let's make a motion. <laughs> make a motion to end the... To adjourn. Yeah, Second that, and it's a vote. We're yeah. done. All right.